Greetings, Vart Watchers! It is an odd start time. It is a, a strange, discombobulated day. When will they get in? Who knows? Oh, okay, immediately. Wow! Alright! <laughs> oh, Trezini! First! I was going to put a cheeky message in for the VOD Watchers. I mean, you can help me if you want to send like a little message in a bottle to, to the YouTubian crowd. But i got to update the board. I figured starting at the strange time and with everything going on, I thought there'd be a little bit of uh, free to post. Ooh. Are we going to end up in another fucking death match? Sorry, uh, so Ultrazini, uh, this puts you up to two, tying you with, <laughs> you guessed it, genres. Uh, Vanderbeast, thank you for the pint glass. Bacon is fine. <laughs> Ludo, bacon is fine. Not dead. Bacon is okay, don't you? Don't you encourage them? Bacon is fine. <laughs> oh, well, Orchazini, I hope you find a decent one. Uh, from our multiple moves and downsizing, we basically have like an elephant's graveyard of monitors here. <laughs> no, we're not doing bids for bacon. They're not dead. Don't get me in trouble. Fucking Terry. Anyway, how are you all doing, friends? I've got a pre-release build I can show you. Uh, I... I'm doing better. I'm doing better. Took me a little while to get up to speed today. And... Yeah. Yeah! But, I'm here. Uh, I had a little putz around on... Uh, Life Eater, as out of his newest game. And... It's fascinating. It's really fascinating. I put it in uh, our friends' games, but yeah. I don't think it's something we're necessarily going to stream, because it is dark. And it's one of those ones where it's not dark in terms of what you're seeing, right? There's no graphic violence, there's no, like... There, there's no... There's nothing heinous in that regard. But when you stop and actually think about what you're doing and how you're playing it, and how it makes you pay attention to things, it's... Dark. Like, I'm going to be thinking about Life Eater for a long time. Yeah, no, Ludo, uh, Zalabi has another title out. Uh, actually signed a five-game deal with... What's the publisher? Sorry, I'm flitting between multiple... Uh, Frosty Pop. Who I hadn't heard of prior. Uh, but they are publishing the pillow fighting game. Um... Prior to that, Frosty Pop had only put out a couple of small titles. So. Vanderby says, Darkman trading in organs. Yes. Uh, and Caffeine, Watto and Welcome, Eriman, and Eriman. Thank you again. I had, I had, I definitely had my moment earlier. Okay, actually, well, so Ludo, this is a good thing to talk about because uh, this is how you structure a game dev in the same way that you might do like crop rotation, but we'll talk about that in a sec. More Len Watto and welcome, hello, hello. Um, oh, and if you're wondering why one, Eremon is the uh, Jarl, and uh, two, what is that about is Eremon threw in a big, big old donation while I was trying to get myself up and going today, which is incredibly kind, thank you. But the thing you have to understand is, I was in the kitchen making a bacon sarnie, <laughs> so, I had some full-on, like, wait a second, is there somebody else in the house? What? What? Because the voice was just loud enough that I could tell it was a people voice, but I couldn't hear what was being said. Like, it was some spooky shit. I just, I thought you'd want to know, you actually managed to, to, to get me with some spoops. Yes, not the person. Heckin' terrors. Is this long ship made of multiple fake woods? I don't know. Yes, but we prefer to call it ethical non-mahogany. <laughs> oh, bacon. 
I don't know when I'm gonna, gonna get the chance to use that joke, but thank you. That's going in the that's going in the bag. Okay. So I guess before we get into game news stuff and things like that, so uh, Ludo was asking, how in the hot heck is uh, Zalavir releasing so many games? Well, uh, the way it is is that Strange Scaffold is a big operation, right? That essentially has people working on different games in different time frames. So, like, the team who was making El Paso elsewhere also did El Paso Nightmare. But those weren't the same people that were doing Sunshine Shuffle. And those people aren't the same ones that were doing Life Eater, right? And in theory, like, as an independent operation, you can offset your people in a staggered, as I said, like a crop rotation kind of style. And it allows you to develop a lot of games. Now, the thing that we have to not do is say that it's just Zalavir. Because it's not. Like, Zalavir works with a ton of cool and interesting people some really talented folks right it's just that zalavir is both the face of strange scaffold and like the, the the driving force the tip the spear if you will um but yeah that's that's predominantly it now in terms of how dark life eater is like i'll give you the the gist well, okay i'm sure you all know the basic premise right you play a you play the servant of a dark uh, you, you play the servant of the god of the earth and every few years, he has you kidnap and sacrifice someone to delay the end of the world. Only now, for whatever fucking reason, he's super pissed. And the amount of time between sacrifices is now, like, days, not years. Um, so what you end up having to do is kind of like a... It's a research resource management. So you only have X number of hours before the the sacrifice has to be made what you need to do is research a person find out enough of their patterns that you can safely guess where they're going to be and then decide to to grab them um however the bit where it gets dark oh sorry and also you can the more uh, invasive your investigation uh, the more suspicion you raise but you can offset that by doing other tasks, which still takes time. So basically, time is like your your resource to spend, and you're managing suspicion while researching somebody. Like again, it's really solid. It's a great example of like simple premise, um, simple premise with excellent execution. However, this is where it gets dark. At the end of it, to complete the ritual, you have to. You have to complete the ritual in a way that corresponds to the person. And so it's things like, if this person has children's break their third rib. If not, you know, sacrifice their left lung. But then it gets really personal. Does this person have a good sleep schedule? Does this person, uh, you know, uh, does this person live alone? Do they commute? Things like that. And the thing is, you have to get these questions right, because if you don't, then the, the ritual fails. And, you know, game over screen. But it forces you to pay so much attention to the person. And that's the point where you realise that, you know, you really are stalking and kidnapping these people. You know, it's not just like the person and finding out all the cheeky stuff they're up to. You know, like, the first person you go after, you find out is unequivocally bad. And that's cool, like, rest your little... Rest your little guilty conscience, at least for the first one. I haven't gotten much further. But the amount of information I realized that I knew about this person got a little unhealthy. So yeah, I don't think it's a game we're gonna stream because it's a... It, it, playing with a group will be kind of almost like cheating because you'd be able to offset the, the knowledge. Um... I mean, Amorlin, it doesn't go that, like, visually, viscerally disturbing, right? It's just, through the game's mechanics and through the thematics, you've been forced to become this person who stalks and murders people. And it makes you feel that role, and it's it's not a comfortable one to, to wear, you know? Like, ultimately, you're... Uh, 
assuming the uh, the god you serve exists. Ultimately, you're preventing the end of the world. Or at least, so far as your character is concerned, you are doing a necessary evil. You don't want to do it. This isn't something you want to be doing. But if you don't, world ends. Everybody dies anyway. Right? Uh, Vanderby, sadly, you can't use a fish as a weapon. Um, I will talk to Zalavir about it, but... I think it's a massive oversight. Uh, and that way we won't have any moments where someone's like, Put down the fish! Um, but yeah, I know it's so weird to say, like, this game is fucked up and will mess with your head, and you should totally play it, but that's where I'm at. Uh, and Dari, Watto, and welcome. Hello, hello. I just... Okay, Zalavir did not achieve it overnight, right? This is not something that Zalavir was given, you know... This is not like Nepo Baby status or like, you know, a breakaway magic hit. The success of Strange Scaffold has been because it's been week in, week out, like, grind. You know, Zalavir's done a talk with us a load about like pizza money as a business model. And it it's what he's done. He's worked very hard to get to this point. But I'm so happy for him just because all of the projects he's creating are all exploring something they got something to say first like like the expression comes first and the game fits the rest uh so pitipi it's not I, I i see the comparison and i think it's a good one but it's very different because in this it's it's the madness and isolation of it like are we playing as someone who's just gone fucking batshit bananas? Is Zinfidel really there? Our character believes it. But, like, there's no evidence or proof. Like, the game over screens don't show the world being cracked apart. You just get told, wasn't good enough. Like, you failed to appease Zinfidel. Or however the god's name is him. But we're not shown, like, mass destruction or mass murder. It's kept incredibly ambiguous. And so unlike the people in, uh, the people working the staff jobs in Cabin in the Woods, they know empirically what they are doing is preventing stuff, right? They've got the, they got the data, they have the knowledge. But this, you're playing somebody who is alone and isolated, who believes that they have to kill somebody to prevent the end of the world. And they might have to, why not have to? Like, and it's that ambiguity combined with a gameplay that's all about Deconstructing somebody's patterns throughout a week. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And Square Peg and Pit Appeal. What? Oh, and welcome. Hello, hello. Uh, Dustin, that's just a money. T that's just a money thing, right? I. There's a lot of good iconography in Life Eater. Like um, the the multi eyes setup and everything. So, but next tattoo I want to get is uh, another Rain World tattoo. I'm gonna get the Karma Gates on my hand, so I don't fucking forget them. Honestly, if I had time, I'd also get like the different fruits, <laughs> uh, the different fruits in order for Sea of Thieves, because I know Kona, Konakle. Ah, I made up a new fruit. It's a Kona pineapple. Konakle. I know the coconut is worst and pineapple is best, and then cooked food from there. But yeah. Um. What, you know what, Dori? In terms of what it asks of you as the player, it does have some similar beats with Slay the Princess, but your character is 100% sure that if they don't do this, people die. Like, if they don't do this, this is the end of the world. So there's none of the sponginess. You can't, you can't take pity on the people that you're... Oh, maybe you can later on. Again, I've only been able to play it for a little bit, just to kind of see how it is. And honestly, like... It plays like video editing software, right? Like you have each um, day of the week, but then the person's schedule on a timeline. And so you just kind of research all the little bits to find out about them. Oh, I see, Orchazini, and this is why I need the tattoo. You're right, banana is worst, then coconut. Right? Oh. But we've got a couple weeks until new Sea of Thieves content. 
Um, friends, I'm not usually a soapboxian kind of individual, but will you indulge me a teeny tiny rant? Um, I got in a conversation at a coffee shop yesterday about the, the concept of dark patterns, right? Uh, UI, UX, game design, and philosophies like that that are meant to trap us uh, into spending money or kind of trick us into feeling good about things that we shouldn't. Um, and it was a really good conversation. There's a gentleman uh, around our local area who worked on Second Life back in the day. And he ended up going into film and television after this. So we're just kind of... We kind of trade stories from our different spheres. And it's always fascinating. Like, um, But it was, it was a long and interesting discussion about... You know, the gamification of social media and stuff like that. Shit that you already well know about. But um, today, while I was trying to get my my sad sack team... Um, while I was trying to get my sad sack into gear, uh, I saw that Overwatch are making some changes. Now, I've been... I haven't been a fan of Overwatch since it got kind of ruined for me, but I've been keeping up with it, right? Um, like a lot of people, I had really high hopes that Overwatch 2 would be a way to come back into it with, like, narrative and character and story and... Nah. Nah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a coat of paint, and I, I couldn't give a whole heck. Um, but the reason why I wanted uh, your permission to soapbox a little bit is that today they announced that old mythic skins will be available for direct purchase. Oh, sorry, and this is the thing. They'll be available for purchase, not direct purchase. You still have to use fucking Overwatch fun coins or what have you, which, in theory, can be earned via the battle pass. So you'd have to... Okay. But the skins work out to $75 a pop. All right. Uh, Zoom Zhang, Watto and welcome. Um... These mythic skins work out to 75 USD, and I, I am slow mo livid. I just like I have friends who agonize over the price of a whole ass video game, and like you know, do we want to go past that 13 dollar point? Do we want to hit the 15, the 20? Like, you know, is that is are we asking too much? Are people going to to shell out for it? Yeah, no, so Vanderbeast is $75 for his skin. Um, and again, Zoom Zang. What and welcome. I'll, I'll be more conversational in a second. I just, I think I need to get this rant out of my system. Because here's how it works. You have to get... Well, so Ludo. It's 8 fatey... It's 8 fatey fun coins. Wow, I can't even talk. It's 80 fake fun coins inside to get a mythic skin. You can acquire that... From grinding on the battle pass. I don't know how much time that takes. However, you still have to pay $10 for the privilege of grinding that season pass to get that. Okay. Um, if you were right now to log into Overwatch 2 with the intention of purchasing one of these skins, the cheapest method that you could acquire 80 fun coins from is by buying the 100 fun coin pack for 75 USD. Like, that's the cheapest. If you decided you needed to buy a skin right now, that is the cheapest manner you could do it. Or, you buy the season pass and then grind. But again, I don't know how long that takes. And I'm just... What in the actual hot fuck? You know? The Cowboy Bebop skins were... Uh, I think those were $25 a pop. Like, I'd have to... I'd have to go and check the, uh, the fun coin pricing on that one. And the reason why this kind of, like... So Hoppers, we actually, we haven't talked about tipping in video games, um, but we can do. 
the irony, of course, being that yes, an, an ex actor Blizz person saying that we should be able to tip video games uh, drives me up the fucking wall. Having the option to tip an indie team where, you know, 20 bucks might be the difference between them eating dry cup ramen and actually getting some groceries in. And Angel Kalina, Watto and welcome. <laughs> I was going to ask what a ting is um, and then reference the acrobats but yeah uh, Ludo is saying that from the battle pass it takes from 25 to 30 hours of playtime assuming fast queue times to acquire that many fun coins and I'm just so over it Like, it reaches a certain point where, like, the monetization to gameplay ratio is so far the other way that what what is left? I'm sorry. And look, it's not the only game that has these kind of things. I'm a huge fan of Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves has a similar thing. You play, you buy the battle pass, you get a bunch of free stuff, and you get free fun coins to buy, you know, paid items with. There are packs and things like that. Uh, and I think the exclusive ships work out to about $17, $20. I think that's the, uh, the the fancy ship packs. So, like, a game that I enjoy also has a similar premise. But, like, what I hate about it is that... Oh, exclusive ships are 20 Thank you, Watrazini. Is that it's through this obfuscation is how they're putting forward this idea that, like, no, 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 it's worth $75. Uh, excuse me! <laughs> fucking excuse me! What? Fucking what? If it was actually put out next to a price point, that would change things. That would change things a lot. Because people would go, I'm... <laughs> it's fucking excuse me? Like... I remember the EVE Online rebellion after the Monocle situation. And it is worth saying that the reason behind the EVE Online rebellion was because of an internal email that leaked about their aggressive stance on microtransactions and stuff like that, but like... Yes, Ludo, you're entirely correct. It does mean that one of these mythic skins from Overwatch 2 costs more than Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yeah, Eremon's like, for 75 bucks, a pro player should show up and coach me. Ugh. I actually met somebody who was working on a service like that. Uh, it was like, it wasn't Sherpas, but it was something like that. Where you could uh, rent a pro player's time, make it come help you with stuff. And that's valid, right? But I'm just... I think what's so insulting about it is that... This isn't new content that is being, you know, crafted and put forward. This is just slapping a price tag on something that used to get from a grab bag. Like, this is very reminiscent of... So this is very, very indicative of the more aggressive um, Mobage microtransactions. Um, and, like, I... So, MDH, I don't know the Honkai-verse games as well as some of you, so I don't want to speak about them, you know, with... I don't want to speak about them with authority, but one of the giant robot games I tried playing on my mobile, my mobile video game device, uh, was asking for $110 for a mech set. That's the five pieces and the, uh, the pilot to go with. And the way I looked at that was like, that is how much that is how much they can afford to sell it for without going through the gacha system. Because obviously the gacha system's a dice roll, but once you're in the once you're in the crank handle sphere, you're just you're just feeding five dollars in. You end up spending so much more. And it's like look, there are loads of titles out there that are struggling, that really do need help. And then we've got behemoths like Blizzard. A now Microsoft owned entity. Like, they don't need, they have a Microsoft money. They have near infinite war chest now. Like, sorry. I mean, it also leads neatly into, uh, 
uh, how Take Two has been cancelling a shitload of games uh, and laying off a whole bunch of people. Uh, Take Two, the publisher of Grand Theft Auto, uh, prints money infinitely thanks to Grand Theft Auto Online. Another example of rampant microtransactions. But no, Ludo, you're entirely correct. Like... The whole concept behind microtransactions was initially like something that's not quite a DLC, something that's not quite an expansion, that in the grand scheme of things should be the same as a bag of Doritos or a Diet Coke when you're at the store, right? You all know the whole reason why they have those little like like candy and confectionery setups by the checkouts is because like maybe you've been shopping, maybe you are tired or thirsty or hungry and you're like, God, I am. I just want a fucking snack right now. Oh look, here's Doritos. How much are they? Like 25 cents. Cool. Yeah, impulse buy. They don't put a fucking Fabergé egg! <laughs> right, they do in hotel, in airports. That is always a place where you can see the, uh, the class difference. But like, they're not trying to sell you a fucking condo there, right? And the reason why a lot of this stuff doesn't get called out is because of how we've moved around it. Like, when you think about the fucking horse armor and how mad everybody got about that, and now it's like, oh, if you want that Mercy skin, that's $75. Yeah, it's but... Creating a situation where through these different systems, we've disambiguated cash to the point where it's like, fun coins is definitely where a lot of these dark patterns thrive, right? Because here's the thing. If I tell you a skin costs $75, that's fucking insane, right? That's more than a whole ass video game. That is the purchase of and several months of Final Fantasy XIV, the award-winning MMO. Do you know how much video game that is? And they're saying like, yeah, give us us for a give us us for a mercy skin. But it's because the obfuscation of the system, right? It's not $75, it's 80 fun coins. And you get some fun coins from playing it. Maybe if you log in, you get a fun coin, or maybe if you're playing the season pass, oh I've got 20 fun coins, I maybe just need to buy a few more. And it's that dark pattern usage that drives me up the wall. So thank you for letting me step on my soapbox for this one. Like I understand microtransactions aren't going away. Like, Valve has kind of perfected the model. Although, with Valve, the value is set by the person, not by the company. Whether a skin costs $75 or 75 cents is what people believe it is worth. Gil says they could clean up their Steam wish list with 75 bucks without a sale. That's because you have a sensible wish list. My wish list is a behemoth. But that's another story. Yeah, huh. when you think about how much money that is, so 40 bucks for the pre-order, uh, don't pre-order, but I, I, I won't chastise because Final Fantasy XIV has definitely done their fight. Um, and then 30 bucks for two months of fun, like, yes, that that is $70, but it's fucking good. Yeah, well, okay, so the reason why we use fun coins in video games rather than direct transactions is for simplification of purchasing, right? If you have a product that is available for sale in multiple regions, those are multiple taxes, multiple problems, uh, and it varies dependent on region to region, and how do you price it regionally, right? Because, like, as we saw with... Uh, artifact, which I will love to bully, if you set everything the same price internationally, that kind of fucks people that don't, you know, live in a region with a strong currency. Yes, Artifact was $20, $20 flat on Steam, but it was the equivocant of $20 flat everywhere, and that got spicy. But anyway, so the reason why we use fun coins is so that you're not doing every single microtransaction as a single purchase, right? 
And if you have people playing in different regions, that allows you to structure your price points thusly. So what you do is you adjust the price of fun coins in different regions so that somebody in, say, Brazil that has a very, very weak currency can still play and interact without being priced out. And if your regional pricing is predominantly around fun coins, it makes it easier to stop people from just, like, VPN hopping. Um, now, I'm not against VPN hopping. Uh, sorry. I am... I am morally on board with whatever helps you all survive till 25, alright? Uh, I do not condone the use of VPNs to circumnavigate the price points of sometimes egregious AAA companies. And I would never condone it on this Twitch.television. <laughs> How's that for an Ollie Outie? Um... Sorry, I definitely lost my thread there when I was uh, bailing my ass out. But going back to what Gilbot was saying, the the dark pattern of this is exactly what's happening with, you know, this Overwatch skin, right? You can't buy 80 fun coins. You can buy, what is it, like 10, 50, or 100. Whereas most things cost like 40 fun coins or 80 fun coins, right? You're always left with some over. And this is a dark pattern technique that's designed to get you to spend more money. Because you have paid for 100 fun coins. And you have bought your your mercy skin or what have you. And now you have 20 fun coins. And you can't quite get another big thing. But you can get some little things. But all those little things will all be odd increments. Like 5 fun coins. Oh, sorry, like 6 fun coins or 4 or 7. So you'll always have fun coins left over. And then, you're looking at a resource that you can't spend. And there's nothing that makes the, the human condition go, hmm, maybe I'll get some more fun coins than having some that can't be used, because it's just not quite enough. And that is used across the industry. Gil was talking about it for um, Catcom and Fight Club and stuff like that. But then, ironically, the thing that users got mad about was DLC available... <laughs> for Dragon's Dogma 2. Because when you're honest with users, they go, oh, I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> I don't know, Verdant Flow, if I start calling them Wii Points, you might get into piss-boiling territory. And uh, despite my soapbox requirements right now, I'm actually, my, my, my pee remains unboiled. I can't wait for us to do a playthrough of Dragon's Dogma 2, though. It's going to be so good. I never got to finish mine for Playframe. But, uh... And I'm pretty sure the Dan's will get to it. But I feel like we'll be able to do it in the future. Yeah, Gilbot. Got to keep that piss on ice. <laughs> Probably need a better catchphrase. <laughs> But, like, if you go over to the Steam page for Dragon's Dogma 2, there's lots of microtransactions. You know, you can buy a camping kit or um, some custom sounds, uh, a makeshift goal key or gowl key, right? And this is no different than the kind of things we're seeing in other places, but because the users are given a direct purchasing decision, they go, no, fuck this, right? <laughs> Glass of piss on the rocks. Get that to a friend once for his birthday. Uh, I had to do a jelly shot out of his arse as payback weeks later. I've lived a life. But the thing to take away from this is not, I can't believe people are being mean to Dragon's Dogma 2. Capcom's not a small wee baby indie, right? They're, they're going to be fine. But more the case of the reason why we don't see people more up in arms is because of the obfuscation. The process of moving from standard to fun coin like, and numbers, like, thank you for asking. I'm doing better. I'm doing better. I had, yeah. I'm doing better, but thank you for asking. I, I appreciate it. I'm kind of focusing on uh, video gamey stuff. Oh, Dustin, you heard me. I think I've actually talked about it before. Oh. Now, this is not a uh, a piss-guzzling extravaganza, dear friends. 
Uh, so I'd like to offset my <laughs> with some lovely news that uh, if you want to see how messy video games are uh, in the era before we had uh, standardized game engines, uh, Descent 3, the source code has been released for free use. Uh, that's the game developer article that will take you where you need to go. But yeah, uh, programmer Kevin Bentley, uh, who works on the game a thousand, thousand years ago, um, has just released the whole feckin' thing. <laughs> uh, caffeine, that would be a very different website. And so, by the way, like, I love that. I don't know how much use it is going to be to all of you. Like, Descent 3 is built upon the bones of its predecessors, and it's gonna be, there's gonna be some weird, like, like, spaghetti code in there. But it is a great example of where games were, and, you know, there's probably a lot to be learned from that. You know? I never saw anybody do anything with the Mech Commander 2 source code, but that's been around for feckin' ages. Is it still about? I have to have a, you know, I'll have to do a deep dive into Mech Commander 2. Because I realise I actually haven't checked on in that in a while. Um... But yeah, I think that's just a nice little thing to uh, to offset. Uh, also, uh, as you might have seen yesterday, uh, the Just Cause developers Avalanche, not the shitey wizard game Avalanche or the shitey NFT Avalanche, the good Avalanche, uh, have officially unionized. Uh, over 100 staff members uh, will be in an official recognized union as of uh, this time next year. So... Oh yes, all the eco terrorist group. Yeah, T from Barrett. They they've got union cards now. Save the planet. <laughs> we all went for the same joke. I mean, in fairness, y'all were faster than me. Yeah, save the planet. Form a union. Um. So Chonorus, I haven't discussed the Nintendo Indie Showcase. We'll probably end up talking about it, because, fingers crossed, touch wood, touch wood, uh, I won't be in bad mental health state tomorrow, so we'll start at a more reasonable hour, and we'll talk about it, like, you know, Nintendo have used their Nintendo Directs to skyrocket some indie teams into the stratosphere, and I fucking love them for it. Um, Skybound are crowdfunding uh, a video game based on Invincible, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Because Skybound are not poor. Um, they're asking for 5 mil. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, also, it's worth noting that um, they're not using um, Kickstarter. They're using uh, Republic. Uh, which is kind of like... Uh, what was the one before it? Fig. So it allows you to invest as either... Uh, an individual or as an actual um, uh, or as a proper investor so yeah but personally I don't think Invincible would be a very very good game like it's definitely not one that I would want to personally adapt but I mean, who knows? I, I, every good game that comes out is uh, better for us all, right? But it's just, like, Skybound makes bank. The the royalties they get on the Walking Dead TV show are redonkulous. And, like, Invincible, uh, the cartoon, has been doing very good. Like, Amazon games could just pay... Five mil for Amazon? What? That's not even a pee in a bucket. Although I'm pretty sure Amazon Games is unofficially dead, or might be dead dead. God. I always feel like a fucking war correspondent whenever anybody asks about Amazon Games. And I have to take them through the whole, like, lumberyard implosion and all that nonsense. <laughs> Square big. If the show's called Invincible, then how come I can see it? 
No. <laughs> Make me laugh. Uh, now, Chornerus, if Silk Song does get end up getting proper announced tomorrow, that would be funny as fuck. We will get to see the entire internet collectively lose their marbles, which will be very entertaining. Uh, so what else is going on? Um, a group of fans are bringing back Lawbreakers, the game that killed Kiffy, uh, Cliffy B's uh, hopes and dreams. Um, uh, I finished watching the Fallout TV show. It is very worth your time. Uh, numbers. I did see the uh, Genshin Hollow Knight tribute, which looked really good. Um, oh, and one of the writers over at Bethesda running his mouth and creating a whole bunch of drama over the weekend was at least entertaining. Uh, a good reminder that the offhand comments of Anne Writer on a large project does not a canonical situation make. <laughs> Sorry, Squarepeg was saying Cliffy B's hopes and dreams died on Broadway, not with Lawbreakers. I just love the fact that Cliffy B quit video games. Like, I'm going to go somewhere that appreciates my genius. Somewhere that's going to be kind and loving and not at all cutthroat. Like Broadway. <laughs> uh, so, Immortal End, um, it's not really anything of consequence. So, basically, with the... Uh, one okay. One of the writers over at Bethesda said that the person you play in Fallout 4 um, was one of the people from a cutscene in Fallout 1, and it's it's like two guys in power armor, and one just executes a person in the street, and the other laughs. And apparently, he was the guy what laughs. Um, he had to walk that back because the internet did not take kindly to it. It also doesn't fit the canon because, like, you get to choose, like, you essentially get to choose and craft your character in Fallout 4. So. And Immortal End, see, that's that's where I'm kind of at, like, like, homie, homie, you weren't about. That was Fallout 1. Yeah, Earthman Dave, your, uh, your cryo husband, turns out, was a dick. Trash Hulk is uh, a war criminal. No. Metal husband, not like Thrash Hulk. Oh, I need to watch uh, Final Pam again. Uh, the There is a rumour that Keanu Reeves is going to be voicing Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, it does not come from a veritable source, but you know what? I think Keanu could do it. The problem for me is, like much like with uh, uh, Team Foursquare's uh, Dragon Ball Abridged, I've heard so much of the Sonic fan dub that... In my head, that is the... That's the canonical shadow voice. Um, I mean, it doesn't affect us a hill of beans, but... Um, should have been Cumberbatch. That would have been funny as shit. But Cumberbatch's, like, very British Sherlock voice... Um, oh, okay, so let me tell you what's been going on with me. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the good, I'll tell you the bad. Let's, let me give you a, a will update, which kind of leads you into this week. So, uh, my sad thing from yesterday is that, sadly, the Subnautica co-op mod is fucked. Um, me and here at the people, Dan Jones, have been quietly scheming that we were going to do a co-op playthrough. Um, and... After the update where they brought the uh, the Subnautica Below Zero content into the main game, like the big uh, buildings and some of the extra glass stuff and things like that, uh, that's kind of broken the mod. Apparently no one's working on it anymore, so I was like, ah, oh, beans. I wanted to go on Cyclops Adventures with DJ, so I was very sad about that. Um, however... Uh, because both of us have wanted to get back to it. Uh, fingers crossed. Touch wood. Touch wood. Uh, if it all goes together, 
Uh, next week, uh, me and DJ are going to start playing Valheim together. So we'll be doing some streams of that once a week. So, yeah, um, that's that's where our team up be. Because um, both of us have kind of not gotten the chance to do the, the late game stuff. Um, the group that DJ was playing with, they all played it for like two days and then disappeared. Um, whereas I got to play it with you lot, and then that server keeled over. Then I got to play it with Joe Cat, and you know Joe Cat's uh, Joe Cat's in the peaceful place beyond the reach of the internet now. So actually, Van Beast, I haven't hit up Floydo for future happen lance, but I should. Um, but this week's going to be a busy one. So here's the good. Um, so today we are playing a game called Harvest Hunt. Harvest Hunt is a spooky roguelike, and it has this fucking great art style. Now, the reason that I really, really want to show you this is I know, like, a spooky game on a Tuesday is not usually our modus operandi, but the way this works is that as you draw abilities a la roguelike, you also get to choose... Uh, for every buff you choose, you also pick different... Um, uh, abilities that the monster chasing you will gain. So the idea that we're balancing our like numerical bonuses with what will fuck us up. So. Oh yeah, no, but uh, caffeine. We just we didn't have the money to to keep hosting a server, and like we've been. Well, I haven't. There hasn't been anybody prepared to run a Valheim server for a while, so. Um, but anyway, so today we're going to be playing Harvest Hunt. Uh, we have a pre release copy. I have checked and reread my email. There's no embargo, so we can just get to it. And again, friends, like, let me. Like, this fucking. Right, let me just show you the store pages real quick. Like. Look at this art style. Look at that! I mean, Gilbot, I have the same problem. Like, I don't get to watch Dan Jones and Dragons live because I gotta feed my family. I gotta be here. So yeah, the uh, the giant smoldering monster that chases you. Um, it, the ways in which it hunts you, the abilities it has changes as you progress. I'm really excited to give this a go today. Okay, so as for the rest of the week, right? So, tomorrow, uh, more Elden Ring. Uh, I'm hoping that... <laughs> Look, so Dave, give it, a, give it a deep dive, because I'd love to know if it's doing anything else quirky. Uh, sorry, Dave uh, downloaded the Descent 3 source code. I'd love to know what weird stuff that's doing. Uh, so tomorrow's Elden Ring, again... Touch wood, touch wood. If my mental state state is back up to snuff, we'll be able to open up the pit for some murders and whatnot. Um, on Thursday, we are going to finish Pacific Drive. You know, I've been talking to a lot of people about this, and it's like, I really, really love Pacific Drive. And I could probably drag it out for a few more weeks, but I think you all have been more than patient with me on that one. Like, you know, streaming as a profession means paying attention to the games you'll want to see and what you'll have had your fill of, and that's fine. But I will probably do another playthrough of Pacific Drive in the future. Fingy's fucking cross, they do more content. Oh, Dustin, Pacific Drive, the Grand Prinali. Oh, I love that. Um, Friday is Sea of Thieves, and as a quick FYI to those of you that are uh, pirates of the high seas, uh, it is going to be a Golden Glory weekend, lol. Um, 
that means more XP, more rep, more goodies. If possible, depending on alcohol levels, uh, what I might do is another galleon of uh, PvPers. So basically, we just sail around, get into fights, lose, but get shitloads of XP in the process. And for Saturday, uh, Akira Zero has been wanting to do this for fucking ages, right? Um, we are going to be playing Project Zomboid together. Um, we've wanted to do this since the last time we played Project Zomboid live. Um, this will be a private server for Longshipians, so you are all cordially invited to come join. Uh, we'll play it for a day, and then if you all want to keep going, we can keep the server up for a while, or just see how we fancy. Honestly, it's just nice to be able to give it a proper run, so if that's something you'd like to do, um, feel free to jump on in. Project Zomboid is a game where things go wrong, so don't worry if you haven't played a lot of it. Uh, well, I had a... So, Dustin, I had a chat with uh, Akira Zero on that one, and I was just very confused. Because I was like, this is a pirate reference. This is a Pirates of the Caribbean reference, but they're zombies. Uh, so numbers, Project Zomboid is out. I mean, it's been out for a while, but the team behind it are good friends of mine. And they've been slowly chipping away. So. Uh, currently, Project Zomboid is 20 bucks on Steam. And I'll see if it's uh, kicking about on Humble or what have you. But, like, it's still one of the great Zambi games. It is definitely worth the time if you haven't had a chance to play it. Hell, the last time we played Project Zombo, I think I actually had some of my friendos on the line. Um, and yeah, uh, so as an additional stream this coming week, yep, you get extra will. Uh, I'm going to be back on Chilby stream. And uh, this Sunday, I would love it if you would uh, come and join me. Because I have finally nailed down a time for Chilby to play Wanted Dead. So we're gonna get a few babies in, go over to Chilbies, and fucking live our little best life. Like, it's, it's gonna be great. I mean, you already know what I think about um, Wanted Dead. Uh, Chilby has seen none of it, and I've managed to restrain as much as I can about the ridiculousness of it. Wanted Chilb. <laughs> Oh, also, uh, yes, uh, they are aware of the fact that in the upcoming Devolver game, which is basically like Sexy Big Brother, um, that there is a little mini character called Chorby. Oh, yeah, well, Dari, it'd be lovely to have you with for some uh, Project Zomboid. And so, that is my. That's gonna be my Sunday. It'll be over on Chorby's channel. I'll ask uh, Lizzie or uh, Kathleen or one of the... Oh, Moose. I was to say, one of the mods. We have three mods. I'll ask them to make sure it gets posted in the going live channel so you all can see it. But... But yeah. It's going to be real good. It's going to be real good. Oh. Um, oh, the other sad... Uh, I'm going to say sad news. The other annoying news is that... So, as you've probably seen, the Fallout TV show is out. Uh, it is very good. Uh, as a long-time Fallout fan, being able to go, I understand that reference, was very, very good. Um, if you've never seen it, it's just a good shot. Like, Fiona has seen no Fallout and had a really good time with it, so that, that made me happy. Um, however... It turns out that this has all been kind of a part of a very clever plan by Bethesda to reinvigorate people's interest in Fallout as a franchise, and it's worked. 
Um, numbers of people playing, you know, Fallout 3, 4 in New Vegas, and even 76 have spiked. And the amount of people who have shaken off their old prejudice and gone into Fallout 76 and had a good time is very, very cool. However, um, alongside the show, uh, Bethesda are releasing like an update pack for Fallout 4, which has fucking broken the Fallout London mod that I wanted to play for you all next week. I had grand ideas. I had grand ideas. So, whether or not the Fallout London mod actually drops next week is up in question. So, who knows? I don't know if there is another suitably British game that we can dive into. No, I'm not going back to Watch Dogs Legion. That's, I don't want to do myself fucking damage. Yeah, no, Air Dragon, even Fallout Shelter has gotten a spike. <laughs> Isn't this one you forgot to ask? But it's Todd. GTA London. God. Scotty, I don't know if you've gone back and watched the, um, the cutscenes from GTA London. But they don't make a nick of fucking sense. To this day, I am amazed that Rockstar became big. GTA 3 changed them. Yeah, and so Edwin, I'm giving Harold Halibut some time to breathe. I... Something in my little, like, shaman brain is like, maybe don't jump on this right away. I don't think it's going to be bad by any means, but, like, just something in my noggin is like, I don't think you need to stream that one. Does that make a weird sense? Uh, we could go back to Fallen London. Uh, I don't think we've done um, uh, Sunless Skies. Uh, but I do have a, uh, I do have a backup game for that day. Um, it's the one I was telling you about, the, uh, you play like a, a fantasy assassin imp. Oh, sorry, no, a swamp devil. In this like high speed immersive sim. Uh, you basically have the same moveset as the alien from AVP, but with a fucking knife. Uh, this was the game I talked about that, uh, would have been right up our alley, except for it came out, like, Christmas. Uh, Lost Flowers, I didn't do Mark of the Rose, but, um, not that I think Mark of the Rose is bad by any means, it's just, uh, with visual novels, I really have to dig deep to be able to do them justice, and Mask of the Rose... Mask of the Rose is a great game for fans of Fallen London. I mean, hell, Fallen London itself is going to be doing, like, a big old expansion soon. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I, I often forget that we have new people here and they're hanging out alone. If you haven't heard of it, uh, so Fallen London is quite possibly one of the greatest browser-based games of all time. Uh, the premise is quite simple. London has been stolen by bats. <laughs> uh, the entirety of the city has been dropped in a gigantic cave underneath the world called the Undersea. And at this point, the screaming has almost stopped. It is witty, pithy, dark, sharp, and unlike anything else. And it's the same world that Sunless Seas and then Sunless Skies is based in, right? Um, and the thing is, the browser game is still going. It is still good. So if you find yourself in need of some... Some really good... Uh, it is an RPG, but it is close to interactive fiction. <laughs> Scotty's like, I wonder London was so upset in Mortal Engines. <laughs> I actually watched the movie of that the other night, finally. And you know what? <sighs> it sucks. Okay, it's not a good film. But it made me feel good about myself. And like, holy crap, the mechanical designs on that are just incredible. Oh, caffeine, thank you. I'm glad one of us is actually, <laughs> one of us is plugged in today. Uh, that both uh, the Sunless Skies and Sunless Seas can be found on Humble. Yeah, and so Scotty, and I guess to all of you, so Mortal Engines is what happens when you try and condense a book series into a single movie, you know. If it had gotten the time to breathe and the treatment, it could have been fine. But the mechanical designs and the concept of this world of 
you know, almost sentient cities. Or the idea that the identity of the city is... Ah, it's fucking brilliant. And, like, they use the whole idea of, like, British colonialism uh, as a half brick in a sock. Like, the metaphor is not subtle. There is no subtext. London... Britain bad. Full of well-meaning people that are very polite, but ultimately consume other cultures and people as nothing more than resources on constant expansion. But yeah, um... Jumping back, jumping back. Uh, Mortlin is correct. The Fallen London is very similar to the original uh, Kingdom of Loathing, which is very much where they took exper uh, experience, uh, inspiration. <laughs> hey, Relu. I was talking about the uh, Mortal Engines movie. earlier about uh, Blizzard price points was getting some uh, some attention. Um, but yeah, so that's most of what's going on. Uh, next week, as I said, we've got Valheim with DJ and the next Sober Meet, which will be nice. So I don't know what the, the following Saturday will look like. Maybe some more marbles on stream or some chaos. But yeah. You know what? I don't want to talk about me. <laughs> I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about video games. So let's do that. Uh, let's get the title started. But, um, like, if you'll want to natter on... I mean, fucking anything that's going on video game-wise at the moment. Boop. Then we can get to it. Uh, MDH played Citizen Sleeper over the course of two days. Yeah, that game is so good. I mean, it definitely hits that that beat of, at least in my humble opinion, of games that may not stream well, but are absolutely, like, one-of-a-kind experiences. Same with, uh, what was it, Goodbye Monster. Like, that game fucking slaps. But it's so chaotic in its own weird way. That's right, that's spooky. Uh, Motlins is playing Asteria right now. Haven't touched the deck builders in the Humble Bundle yet because this is the best dice deck builder they've played. We won't play. uh, I've managed to stay clean from most of the stuff that was consuming me. Um, I'm still chipping away at uh, Bellatro, but I'm at the point now where it's like I'm trying to finish, I'm trying to work up towards doing hardest difficulty once and just finishing all the decks at least once. Um, and I think by that point, the um, the DLC for Vampire Survivors will be looking to drop. Oh, as an aside, I did try out, uh, what was it called? The Road to... Was it Road to Blood... Road to... Yeah, Road, Road to Vostok. Uh, it's a game I've been uh, keeping a Hawkeye on for a while. It's an indie title that's... What if you did... Um, Tarkov as a uh, single player, almost roguelike, and there is a demo out. The demo is insanely rough, like placeholder text, placeholder art rough, but I was curious about it. Um, the only thing I will say is that if you are a fan of Shooty Gunbang, um, it does a couple of things that are like context controls that I really appreciated. Um, uh, for example, uh, I'm a big fan of the Mosin Nagant sniper rifle. 
uh, because I'm a great big dork. I don't know why I like it. I just do. It's usually my go-to one when we're playing like Sniper Elite. And for this one, um, there's it's almost similar to uh, Receiver 2 in that you, to reload it, you open the bolt and then clip every bullet in almost manually. And then you have to cycle the bolt when... It's, it's a weird control scheme, but it feels really good. I'm not, I'm not actually selling this at all. Um, there's a demo out. Again, it's very janky, and I, I think it's safe to say the title will not be dropping anytime soon. But, oh. Sorry. Uh, one of my requests, whenever I'm able to ask uh, indie teams and what have you, is please, please, please make it so that if I have it in windowed borderless mode, that the music doesn't stop when I have to alt tab. like that's really been about it like i said try to live feed it today it's very good if you like puzzle games and don't mind things to have darker see like oh okay no pbs no worry i can i can adjust that no problem how's that i'll uh, i'll natter for a sec so you all can uh, decide if you want more or less um, but it's just it's so interesting because like we're playing Harvest Hunt this is very very arty um, but with more of a simple premise whereas Life Eater is so far out there like it's really hard to compare it to other games hey MDH Beck and thank you the devious deck builders are yours It's so weird that with a lot of the deck building titles and uh, card games and things like that, that they fit into this pocket of like, I love this, I play this a lot, but if you choose to follow me on this path, know that it leads to sleepless nights and weirdness, you know? Like, I want to recommend you all play um, uh, Roots of Yggdrasil, which is a a deck building, base building Viking game with glorious queer coded brilliance where you fly your longship from uh, stranded island to stranded island building Viking settlements from cards you draw from a deck. It's feckin' brilliant. Uh, however, do not start playing it at like 8 o'clock at night on a Sunday because you will see the dawn rise! This looks spooky. Does it have land <laughs> Uh, Bacon, thank you kindly for the 200. How are you doing, friend? What? Oh, and welcome! Uh, it does not have land sharks. This is a shark free bitchy game. Uh, also, as one more FYI, this is a pre release copy. Uh, so, this is pre release. This game is coming out soon. I'll have to check the. Uh, I'll have to check the uh, official release date in just a second. But. Because this is pre-release, one, there may be bugs and weirdness. Um, we're under no obligation or embargoes or what have you. Um, but yeah, if things be janky, that could just be like pre-release bugs. Um, I think that's really about it. Sorry. Uh, and Bacon, thank you for the bits, friends. I, despite me starting hours and hours late, and <laughs> despite me starting hours and hours late, you lot have been very, very kind, and I really appreciate it, right? Um, Adjudica, I have often said that if your goal is to play less games and get more sleep, I am not a friend you should keep. <laughs> I am very proud of myself, uh, as I've been at my uh, my local coffee shop a couple of times and got one of the baristas to start playing Botany Manor. 
this is the individual I spoke of who uh, who used to be all about League of Legends and then got clean. And I was like, ah, you have Game Pass. Well, Kashit has wares. We moved to Luna Nova to escape the plague, only to be cursed, haunted by the vicious devourer. I wish I understood whether we brought this upon ourselves or if its fate was always waiting for us. Each moon, the new warden is chosen to protect Luna Nova. Its whispers grow stronger and stronger. I shall be the one to don the mask tonight. Though at what strength and wits it have, uh, and with the whispers guidance, I will avoid the clutches of the devourer and feast on ambrosia. It's custard. This is it. The first person account from Luna Nova. There are so many terms I don't understand, though. A curse, a devourer, mask, ambrosia, and whispers. I hear whispers too. Don't know how much longer I can resist their call. <laughs> Spoke leftovers in the back of the fridge. I have to keep digging. If they found a way to overcome this curse, maybe I can as well. Yes, uh, Lost Flowers, the, the guinea pigs are trying to warn us and or want me to bring them back some salad from the fields. Not quite sure. Each new moon, the warden is chosen to protect Luna Nova. Oh. Antonia was chosen. Welcome to your village, Luna Nova. Luna Nova is the heart of your journey. You will be returning here after every encounter with the monster, the Devourer. Uh, one villager is chosen to be the warden each harvest season, protecting and providing for the others. You must survive five key nights. Freddy Fazbear, is that you? You must survive five key nights in order to complete each harvest. Uh, each night grants different rewards, such as new abilities, tools, or lore entries. Some of these rewards will always be received, while others have requirements before being awarded. To survive, you must collect enough ambrosia, key resource for Luna Nova. Okay. This seems fine. That's cool. Oh, I hate that. Okay. Move around. Uh, okay. Collecting ambrosia keeps Luna Nova alive. You need a specific amount to harvest. Scattered all the area. Uh, oh! Grab it before the devourer can contaminate it. Oh, we are moving very slowly. The barrier cannot see you while leaning around corners, but it will see the lantern's light. Can I get rid of the lantern's light? Oh. Don't like that. Okay, I'm up to 18 of the good stuff. Yeah, but I don't know if running makes me all loud and shit. Why can't I turn this lantern off? There we go. Take the lantern's light towards the devourer related to your presence. If the lantern is off for too long, your vision will be affected. What the fuck? You've collected enough. Visit entry points on the edge of farmland to escape. These points are marked with white smoke during your first night. So basically, we just start freaking out in the darkness. Our figure is full. Yar! I don't know what that means. All right. Okay, white smoke. So that's the way we can head. Assuming the devourer is like fucking there. Oh, I love this for me. We took a rogue like, put it in a pizza. You've got cheesy blasters. Of 
cool. I hate that for us. Now, if I was smart, what I would do is run over there. What the fuck is that? If I was smart, what I would do is go and smack the devourer now. Um, oh, uh, Numbers is asking, total rain world playtime. I can tell you officially in a sec, but I think it's just shy of uh, 300 total. And Baron von Schiebington the third, Watto and welcome. Hello, hello. Uh, so numbers, I've got. Um, I'm missing three achievements in Rain World. So I'm missing the. Uh, uh, I'm missing the all challenges achievement, and I'm missing the. Uh, the I think it's the expeditions achievement. You know what? We got loads of vigor. Let's not. Let's not fucking tempt fate. <laughs> uh, the other one I haven't gotten yet is... Uh, hang on, let me just bring it up, because I was checking it the other day. So I've got 295 hours in Rain World. I'm missing three achievements. One is the... You sleep... It's either three or five nights in a row but you sleep in a different region every night. Um, and yeah, the other two are all of the challenges and I want to say all of the expeditions. <laughs> all right. So we got, we only had to get 25 of the ambrosia. We got 111. So let's fucking go. New card unlocked, Vigor Elixir. Use it to slowly restore Vigor over the course of three minutes. That sounds useful. So, I will be honest with you, friends. I am tempted to try and get those last three, but that might be, like, a personal situation. Like, the challenges are, like, you know, you've got... You're playing as this slug cat, you have this many tools, like... Either survive for survive for a minute or kill these lizards. Um, the expedition ones take longer. Don't even worry, Dustin. Don't even worry about it. Listen to the whispers. Okay, whispers. Random whispers will affect each night differently. Remember to look at them through carefully. Positive effects: uh, Luna Nova or your warden. Negatively. Uh, so, a blessing affects you positively, either the the warden or where you're at. Calamities affect you or your area negatively. So, failure to banish the devourer on this night will lead to the loss of 80 ambrosia. Uh, the devourer trails toxic gas which damages you to your touch. Uh, this is the devourer's current mutation, and like other whispers, this does not change every night, but is tied to the harvest season. Okay. All right. Your tools. Tools are critical to help you survive the night. Tools, locations. Uh, once you acquire tools, they will appear at specific landmarks. To go to these locations to pick them up for yourself. Oh, shit! So we've got, like, the windmill, the church... Uh, you must spend vigor to acquire tools. So eight nights with only the vigor you have not spent. Okay, that's fucking cool. So over by the uh, the windmill, we'll have two hatchets and a monster vein. All right. No. 
Uh, how do we fucking banish this thing? Oh, I love this for us. Uh, and thank you. Yes, the Blackout Club is still my most played game. Uh, although, Sea of Thieves would probably track. I can get you the numbers for that in just a second. Um, and it's like, you know, back in the day I played a fuck ton of, like, Counter-Strike and... Um, oh, you acquire a defensive tool from the landmark. Cool. Okay, so that's where we need to go. Because that's where we stashed our goodies. And that stinky stink is probably where the Devourer is, right? Look through your mask to make it easier. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so we've got like a cool mask vision. That's bloody Andy. Like, whilst we're, whilst we're going easy, I can uh, turn the lamp off a little bit. Try not to lose my... Try not to lose my marbles. That looks like a person. Ain't that for us. You're alright, baby boy. Okay. use one at a time. Oh, this is bad. Okay. So, damage the devourer with your tool, lol. Now, wasn't there... I'm sure I left something else around here. It was like a, like a dinner bell or something, right? We can use to summon... Ah, there it is. So this always points to where the monster is. Monster there. If we ring the bell... Monster cometh. Lol. How fast does he move? Oh, I hate that! Okay, River. Hello. All right, we got some snacky snacks. Okay, I don't think I hit it. But yeah, so when we ring that bell, matey boy is humming. Freaking out to turn off my fucking light. Okay. Alright, so the pitchfork is a weak tool. I guess I'm just not throwing the axes right. But if we don't banish the devourer this turn, we lose fuck loads of resources. So, I guess this is our fucking battleground then. You're not my dad. Damn, this 
mother hubbard has a fucking number okay so if the devourer finds us and decides that we are uh, a delicious snack that must be handled we don't get to attack on it okay cool it's all right Apparently we're still kind of, I wouldn't say paddling pool, but we're still in in the, the, the Babo sphere. Hello River, what's up big girl? Uh, also friends, depending on how long our stream goes this evening, uh, I may need to... I guess we got to stalk here rather than the other way around. Uh, depending on how late our stream goes tonight, I might have to... Um, uh, get the dags out. Uh, Fiona is hosting a board game night. Okay. Assemble an effigy using the fragment. Damage the devourer causes that. Okay. Now oh, beans. Ah, no pointy, no pointy. Okay. Okay. So if you use the effigy fragment, you're warden sight. Manually picking up the torn fragment with you, you can summon it directly by using some of your vigor. Alright, okay. So that's where we need to go. Oh, interestingly, and it tells us how much of the ambrosia is left in the area. Honestly, I don't think calling this, like... Roguelike by daylight is unfair. Sounds like Matey Boy's pretty close. Okay, banish the devourer. Uh, interrupt the effigy to banish the devourer. Get stuff, mate. Now collect the Devourer's Mask. This seems fine and healthy with no downsides. Oh, man. This effect is fucking cool. I can't wait for this to get much worse. Oh, but once you grab the Devourer's Mask... Okay, then it all changes. All right. And Gil, welcome back, friend. Uh, you move a lot faster while crouching. Card selection. So Warden Strengths and Villager Fortifications are chosen randomly with all the unlocks in your deck. You can decide not to acquire any cards. Choose wisely since you can only hold a limited number. Uh, so Ravenous. Rations uh, recover vigor faster. Receive vigor when damaging the Devourer. Move faster while crouching. Uh, ooh, a fortification. Draw a new set of strengths and fortifications each night. While acquiring tools, choose a starting location on the map. After every successful banishment, gain more ambrosia. Let's go with foraging. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, in case uh, you were wondering, like, how can we make Dead by Daylight more... Let's add a card system into it. Like, honestly, friends, all I'd seen about this before today was just the art style and the general premise. Um, and hang on. So, uh, let me be a much better host than I have been so far. Okay, so this is the Steam page. Uh, this game comes... Hey! As the youth say it. <laughs> Yeet, yate, yote. Which might have to be our next Live, Laugh, Limp Biscuit. Baron, that's really fucking kind of you, friend. Thank you. No fucking thank you.
Okay, you know what, Gil? That's not a bad shout. Like, sir, you're being hunted as a roguelike. That's pretty bloody good. But thank you. Unfortunately, you undid all the, the hard work of house order. Interesting. So if we want to learn more about Devour, we've got to banish it three times. Okay, next unlock. Warden Strengths. <laughs> so Lizzie, much like with uh, the Forbidden Snack, I haven't mentioned... I haven't mentioned tea that often, and I am afraid to. Oh, God, yeah. Okay, look, I don't know the current status on Etsy as a company, if they are good, bad, evil, what have you, but Baron was saying they should be allowed on Etsy. Me neither. Um, some days when I'm feeling real down about, you know, the, the financial state of, you know, my current situation and whatnot, I make little gift lists for everybody that like, you know, if I suddenly had stupid cash, I would I would play like super duper, I don't want to say uh, Father Christmas, more like uh, Katanika's very own gift giving legend. Well, so Lizzie, remember, that was Camille's specialty. They would just appear out of nowhere anytime I mentioned uh, the good leaf water. And I thought that uh, they weren't really hanging around this digital part of the internet. But every now and then, they'll just, they're, like, leaning in on, on your cubicle and just raising an eyebrow. So I, I never can tell. The Phantom of Katanika. Uh, sorry, uh, Katanika is a joke from Dr. McNinja that I started using just because I live a very chaotic life. There have been quite a few times in my life where people have been really kind and brought... Christmas presents I did not expect, right? Or I've been broke as shit and I couldn't get people good presents around the Christmas season. So I came up with this imaginary holiday called Katanika, which is where I could basically buy things for people in the January sales as both a, hey, you are a friend and I value you. I wish I could have done this for Christmas. Or like, um... <laughs> MDH like, why would you want to summon friends? Because friends are more than just a, a means of survival. And it's like the reason why I don't bring up the forbidden snack. Like, that's not what, that's not all peeps are. Like I said, I'm just, I'm one of those shitty mental health days. Oh. So, um, we're adding fears now. So the attack, the devourer's attacks deal half damage. That's good. Toxomiasma, bad. Lurking waters. A water fiends lurk and will uh, alert the devourer to your presence. Okay, so for this one, we're going to need two fragments, right? So. No, I'm going to put. Shit, how did we do it? Okay, prepare your tools. As a current hand. I feel like I'm missing something that I did the first time round to uh, to add tools here. <laughs> no, Dustin. Oh, it's it's right next to me at all times. Current hand. 
Oh, okay. Uh, just the um, the controls weren't working as much as I might have hoped. So here we go. So we've got a blood flask. Fills up with Devourer's blood when in close proximity. Uh, throw the filled flask to cause damage. Monster vein. That was very useful. Oh. Okay. So that's where the um, the vigor comes in. We can set up. It's not just we choose the objects and then where they go. It's choosing where they are specifically. Okay. Oh, I like this. But yeah. So I am. Oh, you guess what I was saying is Baron. I'm in a very similar position. And should the the forces of the world come together, uh, I would use. I would use Etsy and get you all some fucking cool stuff. The only pisser is that I haven't been able to work out why I can't seem to order stuff from there to, like, Canada. Because I was very, very annoyed. Um, I wanted to get Moose a uh, Gizzard Lizard and the... Motherfucker, really? Sorry, I wanted to get Moose a, a Gizzard Lizard thing. Uh, just based on Moose's character from when we did, um, what was it? Uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. And I'm not going to say what I was going to get for Lizzie, um, because uh, that is a surprise. But it was being really grumpy when I was trying to ship things to, uh, make that. To, oh, yeah, nice try, monsters. Now Edie, my feedie. I, I must have just been doing it. <gasps> okay, you have directed your lantern towards the devourer and alerted its presence. You can hide using crouch. Just do. Cornfields hide you from the devourer, but they are not foolproof. Crouching with B is far more effective than standing. Watching a poor character is losing their fucking mind. No, PBS, entirely. I mean... I don't say this enough, and I actually... I did feel very, very bad, because I didn't find out until it was going on, but... Uh, there was a mod appreciation event on Twitch. And unfortunately, it didn't actually give us anything to... It didn't give me enough tools... Alright, monsters over that way. To be able to properly say thanks to the mod team, but like, you cannot know how good they are. Okay. Get some vigor. Like, fucking best team. Take that. Having a vision dim with the lamp off is a very clever mechanic. Stops people changing the gamma on their monitor and cheating. Yes. So yeah, even if you've got it cranked up to 11, turning it off, your your vision just gets wibbly and wobbly. What's up, River? Okay. Unfortunately, I don't think I put anything... Yeah. There was this devourer grenade that we can try. Oh yeah, and some of these logs will float down. Okay. You can only use it once it's filled. Alright, so the devourer is off that way. We need to get close enough to it to fill up basically a fucking blood hand grenade. Love this for us. Oh, 
No, and Scotty, thank you for the bits as well. But yeah, just moose, Lizzie, caffeine. I've been doing this for six years. I wouldn't be able to do this without all your help. Thank you. Three cheers for the mod squad. Hey. Hooray. Hooray. A full round of three cheers by yourself is awkward. I'm not gonna lie. Alright, so we've got half a hand grenade. But there is still plenty of healing items. So, sorry, the other thing I've noticed is that the items in the area persist. <laughs> Hooray. Thank you, Scotty. Uh, so the items in the areas uh, persist between different patches. Oh, come on! Uh, no, buddy! Bad devourer. I'll actually stalk the bloody thing better. Uh, so basically, like, if I eat this snack now, that won't be there the following night. <laughs> Just barren with. But what if? Yes, Bitey. Although Brian, the narrator, does kind of give it a Monty Python, there was much rejoicing vibe. D. It does have that kind of vibe. And Scotty, fucking thank you. Once I'm done uh, with this particular run, you can tell me about your weekends, tell me what you've been up to. Devara uses fiends to track your location. Uh, some fiends can hear you while others can take care. Fiends will alert the alert your presence. Oh, that's fucking horrifying. Welcome to the plague pit in the middle of the map. It's bad. I don't want to think what this smells like. Okay. The devourer was close there. Because our blood meter filled up. Just can't see him through all there. Seen through all the stank. Like, it's his stank. <laughs> this game gets real fucking tense. Alright. Matey Boy can motor when he wants to. One fragment, so I need to stash this and get another fragment from somewhere. Oh, there he is. Big green bastard. Okay. Well, so Baron like that's the plan.
<laughs> Look, I completely understand that uh, the, the restarting of Memnol is going to involve a lot of chaos. And if it involves a, what did you say, like eight, an eight point combo dab, then I've just got a fucking deal. You know, that's on me. Alright, so the monster's over there. There's the church. There we go, windmills over this way. That's where I stash the goodies. I will say, I got the feeling this is going to end up being kind of a little like... Like Dead by Daylight and almost a little Blackout Club-ish. In the sense that... Trying to find... Uh, trying to find all the little hidden goodies in this would be a, a bit of a challenge. Cool. There's the axe. There's Dingus. We did get the next fragment, so we're doing good. And I guess those are just like his personal stank holes. Okay. You can see though, friends, how like the stacking complexity is gonna make this more and more tense. Like the devourer seems to be going rather easy on us at this point. Banish his scaggly ass. Fucking dumped on. But yeah, sorry, so jumping back, jumping back. Um the goal is to get Memnol back up and running this year. I don't know what plans Baron has for the the return and the restart. You know, we'll have a, a proper natter about it as soon as we can, but Oh interestingly, so once the devourer is banished we can no longer pick up items in the world. So we have to balance grabbing the resources with kicking his ass. Maybe? We do lose the vision to be able to see it, so I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, no, MDH, the half damage is definitely helping. <laughs> you know what, Lizzie? That's fair. Lizzie was just like, Baron, wish you the best of luck scheduling a meeting with Will. I thought that said Slipknot. Stink Pot. Throw a throw to damage Devourer, but cause it to chase you for 15 seconds. Alright. Alright, choose one new strength. Parasite. Receive Vigor when damaging the developer. Increases the range of throwable tools. Rations recover bigger faster. I think Athlete, like, because we've been using throwing axes. Alright, Warden Strengths. Okay. So the Warden's Mask. Alright. To defeat the Devourer and collect Ambrosia. So our current hands, we've got Foraging, after every banishment, gain more Ambrosia. We have the Gourmand, more Vigor, uh, Stalker, Faster World, uh, Crouching, and Athlete. Uh, oh, and here's the Compendium. Interesting. We have to banish the Devourer three more times to learn about it. All right. Okay. Uh, Baron, look away, friend, and to be continued. Oh, okay. I said I would natter with you all before we begun the next run, and I plan to do that. So how have you been, friends? What have you been playing? Um, as I said, this weekend, I didn't get up to anything super like, whoa. 
Except for like the road to Vlodstock demo, which like it's not good. But I love the concept of it. Ooh! Mighty uh. <laughs> So sorry, friends, I did not mean to burp in your ear. Mighty pitchfork! So the pitchforks now do enough damage to drop a whole fragment. Uh, deafening cry. Temporarily lose hearing when detected by a fiend. I hate that. And toxic miasma. Alright. So... The monster veins are very handy. The blood flask... It's kind of a take it or leave it. Monster vein very handy. Let's try the stink pot. Hatchet and the monster vein. Because in theory, shouldn't need as many tools. Uh, Moose says, news the job hunt mines. In one day, managed to get an interview set for late this week and a programming test for a different gig. Yes! That's what I want to hear, Moose. Uh, Angel Clean has been playing a lot with the Minecraft Potato April Fools. Oh, lovely. Um. Who was I chatting with about that? Is it DJ? I forget. I was chatting with a friend about uh, Minecraft, and I haven't done my my usual playthrough of survival mode in a while, but I've definitely got the itch again, you know? Build myself a mighty dwarven castle out the side of a mountain and an adventure. <laughs> Way cool! Uh, Raven went back to Snail Sim to get the uh, Viking hat and horns. I need to go find the location for the uh, Snareway to Sneven because I do think that's going to be during the quiet period. So, like, uh, so friends, in streaming, June, July is like the dead time, right? And I don't think this is one of those years where. <sighs> Basically, I have a feeling that around about June, July time, I will have to ask for your help you and friendos and whatnot and you know me i'm very much of the opinion of like if i'm going to do like a you know a please help us out stream in the same vein as like a charity stream or what have you but it's like please keep me alive i am prepared to work for it and the challenge that we will be taking on at some point this summer is the snareway to sneven the snail simulator's greatest challenge it is two days in game time to climb a gigantic stairway. Two days. Now I've never streamed that long. In one continuous stint. And so I'll probably have to like. Bring a mattress in here. Just to pass out. But yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I don't know if there's anything that can interrupt you. I don't know if there are like. Salt lines or if your snail can fall off. But. It was very funny during the climb of the monolith, seeing, uh, I think it was Lance who was trying to jump onto it, as Dice Goddess was. So you'd be, uh, you'd be slowly climbing up the side of this gigantic spire, and then occasionally hear, ah! <laughs> just going past. I thought somebody above us had tapped the button. Uh, oh, and if you didn't see, uh, there is actually a longship inside Snail Simulator for us. Ravens might need to ring an alarm in case you accidentally stop moving. Possibly. But the problem is, like, with me, my ability to... My ability to sleep is... Alright, it's been lacking a lot these last couple weeks, but when I'm down, I'm out. And I don't know what kind of alarm I could use to wake me up. Maybe the the spinning hand one to just slap me a few times. That might work. <laughs> but yeah, as I said, if you didn't see it, there is actually a longship and Viking helm in Snail Simulator that was put in literally for us. And it feels like such a fucking compliment, you know? The problem, Scotty, is... Uh, so Scotty was saying we need to train the dogs to the Najim uh, 
on a, like a redemption sound bike. Problem is, it would have to be like a make noise get treat thing, right? And as we have demonstrated, your as a group, the longship's ability to take generosity and turn it into fucking chaos is second to none, right? And I don't want to wake up to two spherical dogs because you'll found the make treat happen button. Like, what happened to Amos? He got fat. He got real fat. And it's just like a sphere. <laughs> like, it's just Amos's little face, but as a sphere. He'd be fucking, he'd love it. Oh, yeah, Lizzie, that's a good point. River is also not food motivated. But, uh... Yeah, Amos, but Seal. <laughs> Dari, actually, I have seen that mod. I've also been looking at a couple of uh, Rain World mod campaigns to, to have a trundle through as well. Just because some of them look really good. The um, the Sphere Cat, uh, sorry, the Pearl Cat. Different pearls unlocking different abilities. Like, are you kidding me? That sounds awesome. But, hang on, what's happening here? There we go. Again, friends, this is an early build. The game comes out in May. So in about like a month or so. So there's a couple of like little little bugs to it. But God, this game's fucking good already. Raven, I think that's impressive. But yeah, I... My skill is that, like, once I'm down, I am. It is nap time. I am out cold. You know, once it... Once I hit sleepy times, it is sleepy times. The problem I have is getting there. Which I'm... I understand I'm very lucky that at least when I get to the point where my body's like, nap time! That I actually get to sleep, but the problem is waking me up. It's I, okay. I don't really need an excuse to get trashed on vodka Red Bulls at a rave at GDC, but one of the reasons why I uh, no 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 no! Do you hit me? Fuck! I've been eated and defeated. Okay, so we get one more night to continue. Let's see. So Divine Harvest, more Ambrosia will clear in the farmlands. Ill Vigor, starting Vigor is halved. Toxic Miasma, hate that. So we're starting with 50. So basically we can... Beans. So basically we can afford the... Couple of the monster veins, maybe an... Oh, so the hatchet is like 35. Alright, so we've got to get a couple of blood flasks. Oh shit, no, we need three fragments. The only thing we can afford is the blood flasks. Oh, I hate this for us. Yeah, Wolf, who could have known that the Devourer would do some devouring on me? I gotta say, one of the things I'm really, really hoping that we get is, um, okay, one, let's go get some fucking, get some vigor back first. Uh, one thing I'm really, really hoping for, and I don't know how they would do it, is the, the doom mod, 
the one that uh, turns Doom into a roguelike. I hope they get a way to do that as a more like formal release. Because that was so good. <laughs> Devour these nuts! Got him! We've undone the Devourer. There's also a ton of Ambrosia, so... I don't know if we get to keep what we bring with, but the... Uh... Like, I don't know if we get to keep the Ambrosia if we get eaten, but something something about me, about the situation, I highly doubt, right? Also, you're going to notice that we're pulling this, like, weird blood-coloured fruit off of everything, and how... Whoever the warden is, is wearing these, like, haunted masks. But then so is the fucking devourer. Like, I think there's going to be a lot to this. I'm real fucking nervous. Uh, I'm going to try and make it over towards the, the tree. church. Dingleberry seems to have lost sight of me. Okay, there's the sacrificial area. Where's Big Tree? Damn it, lots of shit. Like, I don't know how that visual effect is going to play for accessibility, but in terms of creating something where you can create kind of like the lack of visibility that you get from fear as a gameplay mechanic. We're doing real good. Okay. So that's the, the site for banishing. Alright, we're just gonna play it smart. Play it smart, play it careful. We're fucking blackout club pros. Why am I nervous? I fucking got this. But yeah, the taking half damage from the devourer was real good. Buddy. As an FYI, sprinting doesn't immediately uh, uh, sprinting doesn't immediately get you out of crouch. <sighs> I'm just narrating everything that's going on because I'm fucking nervous. Where the fuck is Big Tree? Okay. I bloody hear him. Alright, there's Windmill. We'll buy church. We need his big tree. Oh, I hate this for us. Think about the slug pups. Think about the slug pups. Sadly, right now, the, the slug pups are kind of all over the place, so... Oh, and the acid gas does not fuck around. Ow. Gonna be having a bad time, having a bad time. Alright, but there's some food here, so... All the uh, grenades that we found are over by Big Tree. Right? And we 
can set up some of the uh... we can set up some of the um, the detectors but currently <laughs> The problem we're having right now is not finding out where the fucker is. He knows where we are real good. Honestly, I think he could stand to find us a little less. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind if he took a couple days off, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm fucking nervous. Okay, so this is kind of where we started. Okay, if we keep going around the edge, eventually we've got to get to Big Tree, right? <laughs> Yo, uh, Lizzie, I will absolutely message these peeps about, like, putting in crowd control. Because this is rife for crowd control. The other thing I'll say is that the the first kind of like paddling pool matches do not prepare you for for the devourer giving it its all. Okay. Alright, yeah, I think I see the grenades now. Oh, bloody hell. So the grenades were almost where we started. I just missed them. Good going, dingus. Sticks. Yeah. Oh, pointy. All right, well, we'll buy big tree at least. I think there are some snacks here. We'll be fine. Hate this for us. So that's one of the totems that tells the fucker where we are, if it can see us. That's why he keeps playing pop-up pirate with us. He's getting ratted out. Alright, are there any snacks around here? Because otherwise, I'm a fucking die. Yes, there we go. Some good snacks. <laughs> I mean, Lizzie, you make an excellent point. Uh, I forget who it was that threw in a very large amount of money to just go, Will, dive in the water right now. And I was like, fuck. You know, I am naught but the will of the people. Fear is real. It's interesting, though, that this one is about that kind of hide and seek tension. Rather than being about like. Wait! No! Uh, you bastard! You busted snow. Ha! <laughs> Sorry, PVS was like, I would pay money for a bits for Meg button. I don't doubt that you would, friend. Don't doubt. Oh god! Once again, friends, please remember this is a pre release version, so there's gonna be a bit of jank. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, yes. Sorry, I keep forgetting that um, alongside us getting Ambrosia, the longer we go, the more it eats the fucking berries and shit. I just, I don't want to risk that throw. Ah, gotcha. Oh, what? I blew you up! Fuck off! Okay. Three times like this? Page and having a bad time. Pitchfork is not good for us. So what Pitchfork does... Oh, okay. Uh, so the Pitchfork, we have to hit them three times. And I'm running out of snacky snacks. One of his fucking mates is hanging out this way. There's something real nasty about this, like, central plague pit. This is fine. Everything's fine. This is fine and great. With no downsides. Here's an idea. What if we just fucking left? What if we just got the fuck out instead of trying to fight him? Because there's no healing items here. Yeah, you know what? Here's an idea. Fuck this guy. Okay, so let's see what that gets us. Interesting. Okay. So look at the different seasons. Like, the first one was when we ran. The second two, we defeated him. Then we got defeated. And now we get to see what we... Ah! It's available. Okay, energy rations. Using rations increases your maximum vigor by five, up to 150. Love that for us. Uncovered writings by Antonia. I tore fragments from Devourer, purified them with whatever means seemed to work, time and again. My hope fueled me. Hope that one day uh, I would regain, regain, ah, wah, regain my freedom, and I might see you once more. Perhaps this is why I feel a hint of you in the Devourer's dogged pursuit. Will Isabella remember me? Will you resent me, Matthew? I had, uh, I had listened. Coming to Luna Nova would have been a passing fancy. Her worries seem founded now, but at the time, I did not believe her. No, I refused to believe her words. She always was uh, the better mother to you, and dang it. Loved you more. Mm -hmm. Even though I was the one who birthed you. Again, some, some deep lore. 
I see your inquisitive eyes reflected in hers, your dark brow furrowed in concentration the same way. If I told her I never wanted children, would my burden have eased? Could I, could I have loved you more? Uh, with my words out in the open air. Okay. Antonio's child, uh, Matthew, is there any chance this is his descendant? Is this how the curse passed on? Why I hear these whispers. All right. The Church of the Rose. New harvest season. Okay, the village fortifications are retained. The Devara mutates to Fiend Alert. The Devara's Fiends damage you on detection. Oh, I hate that for us. And Martim has been chosen. This seems bad. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. So the different wardens we get given have different skills. I guess we play through all of the the characters first before we can then either choose. So Antonia's was that uh, the rations recover twice as much vigor. So Antonia would always heal, like, for the full amount. Martin doesn't heal as well, but Martin makes no noise when walking or running. So he gets a real stealth bonus. And we have end... Renee and Nathaniel. Okay. So, Rabbit's Foot. Uh, interact with bells to tem temporarily make no noise while moving. Oh, that's double good. Poison water. The water is poisoned. <laughs> don't, don't drink the water. Repair your tools. What have we... Ah, okay. And foraging was one of the things that we... Kept in from the previous run. Alright. This is, everything about this is so strange in a fascinating way. But something tells me this isn't the only map. I mean... The jaw trap can damage the, the, the devourer. Oh damn, there's a proxy puppet? I love that for us. Grave shovel. Use it to dig a grave once per night. If you would like to die, instead return to life at the grave's location. I live again! Okay, so the hatchet is really powerful. Like, hatchet is a guaranteed throw and hit. Except for, it costs 35 health to start with. Okay. I will remember you. <laughs> you remember me. <laughs> God. Oh, fucking hell. <clears throat> I guess the question on is like, we're working towards something, but what? You know? Oh, sorry. Uh, I think I'm good for the moment. I'm still sipping. I made myself like a a less than like rocket fuel strength um, coffee earlier. So I'm still sipping on that. Oh, and I did want to say like um, to the, the friendos that came for a spot of uh, managed democracy distribution over the weekend like thank you i'm sorry i kind of we got to play some uh, hell divers too and then i took the dogs out and then just crashed i still keep wanting to put together this uh, teeny tiny gundam that jay posts and while i sit behind this actual big chunky gundam that i also want to build Oh, I gotta just rearrange and clear up in here as well. Oh, everything happens so much. <laughs> we 
probably I probably could stand to get some more water. Uh, I've got uh, left the pasta in the fridge waiting as well. <laughs> oh man! I didn't know. Sorry. I tell you what, friends. Uh, let me just take a, a quick little cheeky break. I'll put some uh, some smooth jams on to offset the spoops. I'm gonna throw some water on my face, get some water from the fridge, and then let's continue our adventures. I don't know why I'm struggling so hard today. You know what I mean? Oh, the sheep! No, I do. I just don't want to. I don't want to get into it. You know, it's it's not for me to put my burdens onto all of you lot. And I'm just, I've been really wanting to play this game for fucking ages. Now we've got like pre-release copy to, to trundle around in. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta bring thunder. Oh, uh, Angel Cleaner, thank you. Well, uh, PBS, go get some sleep, friend. Thank you for your company and conversation. I shall uh, hydrate, not die straight. We all left together. <laughs> well, PBS, thank you. And I know, I know. It's, uh, I just, I feel I am the one being lifted more than I am doing the lifting right now, you know? Of course, the irony is I was talking about it in human maintenance, like I was having a little wibble earlier today. And I'm not, I'm not ignorant to the stupidity of what I say a lot of the time, because if any of you were struggling, I would be immediately on it, like, hey, don't worry about it, we got you. But to take that same care of the self, it seems like an insane, almost frivolity. Like, how dare me be having a, a whinge and a wibble? The irony, of course, is lost. Sorry, the irony is not lost on me. How dare Will be kind to his own self, right? What a dickhead. <laughs> um, as a complete aside to an aside, though, uh, I don't know if you all saw uh, DJ was playing through this, like, what if Zelda, but uh, like a bullet hell game that was real cute. Uh, what's the name of it? It's like... I've got my, uh, my wish list as an outsourced memory. Oh, Mini Shoot Adventures, which has been doing very well. Uh, definitely worth it if you want something like that evokes that kind of zelda vibe, but is a little bit more cozy and less stressful than like Hyper Light Drifter or, you know, anything along those lines. But um, it got me thinking about Sigma Star, and I don't know if many people have played that. So it was a Game Boy Advance game called Sigma Star, uh, where... It was your typical kind of post-Pokemon affair, right? You are an guy in a space war, you walk around the environment, and as you do so, it procs um, random battles. But the random battles are like side-scrolling R-type style adventures, which you control with like your sentient squid hat. It's, um, I will say, for the monster fuckers amongst you, it's a cornucopia of concepts. But uh, the TLDR is it's like an RPG bullet hell game. And I love that concept. And I'm sure someone has dabbled with it on Steam somewhere. <laughs> okay, okay. Lizzie, I'll be back in a second. That was me getting all my stories. And then let's keep going with this, if that's all right, friends. Um, this soundtrack absolutely does not fit it, but... Uh, the ambient tunes around this are very, very good. And I don't know about y'all, but yeah, definitely definitely use a quick little breather from the the spoops. Like between this and Life Eater today, it has been a great game for doing creepy shit quietly. <laughs> okay, I'll be back in just a second, friends.
Do you guys want to be tarot with me? So yesterday, I got an email. And this email was from one of those, like, digi jukebox setups. And it turns out that, like, two, maybe even three years ago, and I've lost track of time, uh, I had a birthday over at the dog bar that has sadly since closed. And <laughs> during that birthday, I got, and this is going to shock you, very drunk. Uh, predominantly because the gentleman that ran the dog bar, when he found out it was my birthday, cracked open this bottle of like 14, 15% uh, beer. That was really nice, but yeah, I know Lizzie. It's, you know, it's a stream, it's it's a stream out of schedule, like I'm dropping the, the secret law right now. I don't know, I don't know, shocking. For those of you that know, like, high APV beers and that, like, they hit harder than the numbers should make sense. But that's another story. Anyway, so during this evening, I got hoisted, waddled down from one of my favorite bars, and ended up um, Oh, and Aiden, what's and welcome. Anyway, yeah, so after Dog Bar, Drunk as a Skunk, we waddled down to one of my favorite bars during this particular birthday. And at some point, I signed up for one of those Digi Jukebox services. And apparently, I bought a lot of songs. Now, they haven't barred me from that place, and no one hates my guts, so I can't... I don't think I've done too bad. And it's worth bearing in mind that recently in that same venue, one individual, no joke, put on every single song from Bo Burnham's Inside, in order, start to finish. So, I don't feel like a criminal, but how does this come into an email? Well, yesterday, dear friends, I got a message. That message informed me that I still have $12 of credits on that particular jukebox. $12. And I am reminded of uh, one of the sad things that we have lost due to, you know, greed and capitalism, which is when Vice used to do incredible writing. And let me just find the, the quote. Are you fucking going to play The Boys Are Back In Town Again? Asked a voice when I reached the jukebox. I absolutely 100% am not going to play The Boys Are Back In Town Again, I promised. Punching in the buttons to select The Boys Are Back In Town, which I had memorized. <laughs> yeah. Now you all remember the uh, the Mambo Number no. Five incident, which nearly got us the kick, which nearly got the shit kicked out of us in a burrito place in San Francisco. And that was when uh, a friend of mine put twenty dollars into a jukebox wholesale and just kept putting in Mambo Number no. Five. Um, so yeah, how many minutes of terror does twelve dollars buy? Let's find out. Let's find out. Because the thing about these digital jukeboxes is that. Uh, so okay, which is the the correct version of the boys are back in town? Is it Thin Lizzy? Because um, some of these like newer digital jukeboxes have a lot of stuff. Uh, it is... Hang on. I shall ask someone who is uh, old enough to remember which is the correct version of The Boys Are Back In Town. Lizzie's right here. But yes, it's Thin Lizzie. It is Thin Lizzie. Okay. The council has conferred. All right. So the Boys Are Back In Town by Thin Lizzy. Okay, so I have 23 credits. Alright. And this is The Boys Are Back In Town by Thin Lizzy. Jailbreak, disc one. 
Uh, it is two dollars to play the song. Sorry, it's two credits to play the song, or it's three credits to play it with priority. I have twenty-three credits. We could just play that right now with priority. We can just do that. Like I have the power. Now, here's the thing. I understand the bartenders do have veto, right? So, like, if we just put on... I don't know. Poisoning Pigeons in the Park 20 times. Can we put on Poisoning Pigeons in the Park? Lead Poisoning, Sun Poisoning. Uh, it's not looking good. There's some Alkaline Trio. <laughs> sure smells like wrong dog in here. Um, God. Oh, I'm disappointed to uh, inform you all that. Mambo number five is not available. Oh no, wait, there it is. Thanks, Lou Vega. <laughs> Picture the scene. It is Tuesday night in a dive bar. You are there, hanging out, having a bevy, maybe playing some board games or some pinball. <laughs> Suddenly, Mambo number five comes on with priority. We can brainstorm this. We can brainstorm this. I promise I'm not stalling to avoid getting spooked by the Devourer. But, like... Do they have the 1977 Sesame Street fever? Uh, I'll search for Sesame Street, see what we get. Uh, because if they have Professional Pirate... They have the Sesame Street theme. They have Elmo's dance party. Oh no. <laughs> they have 12 Elmo songs. With such great tracks as Elmo Slide, Me Lost Me Cookie at the Disco, uh, Happy Tapping with Elmo, uh, Doing the Pigeon, Elmo's cover of the Macarena! <laughs> Here's the thing! We won't know! <laughs> so... <coughs> so... They do know where I live. They can't get in. But there may be vengeance. Lizzie just says, let them go. Alright, you said we found a winner, but there's a lot of there's a lot of choosing. Me lost me cookie at the disco. Elmo's cover of the Macarena. Elmo's cover of the Macarena. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. <laughs> we welcome Vengeance Center, Will. Because the thing is, I don't know what Me Lost Me Cookie at the Disco is. Is it a cover of Panic at the Disco by Cookie Monster? I fucking hope it is. Hang on. Before before we send these across, I think I'm allowed to listen to like two or three moments. Okay, so. Let's see if we can find it. It's uh, Elmo. <laughs> Almost dance party. <laughs> Where is it? Me lost me cookie. Me lost me cookie at the disco. Okay.
Oh wow, no, this is this is OG Muppets. Okay, uh, so this is what we could inflict upon a bar, a dive bar that knows my name. It's actually a bop. Like, this is the Cookie Monster Detective Adventures. Driving a bullet car down San Francisco. It gets better? The light was shining, the night was fine. And he was having a real great time. <laughs> and he got careless. Let <laughs> me <laughs> me can't find now. <laughs> me lost me cookie at the disco. <laughs> me lost me cookie in the party <laughs> music. Me lost me cookie at the disco. Me want it back. Oh my word. Oh my word. We've got her, right? We won't know, but <coughs> we have to. We have to. I have 20, I have 23 qu credits. 23 credits. I spend three of those with priority. That means it is either the next song, or if no one has paid for anything, it starts immediately. I think it's because it, it's subtle at the beginning. Like, it starts out like a disco song. We lost me cookie at the disco. Bert and Ernie and the Cookie Monster. Elmo's dance party. <laughs> oh, am I a bad person? <laughs> Is this a crime? <laughs> Alright, we're doing it. We'll never know. All right, we'll never know. No, Scotty, there's no webcam. There's no nothing. Now, what we should do is set an alarm to play Where's My Cookie <laughs> once a day at exactly the same time. All right, maybe we wait until, uh, like, because it's two more minutes until the actual, like, crack of eight o'clock. Um, send the macro. Okay, well, okay. Let's let's give the Elmo Macarena. Because here's the thing, the Macarena is iconic, right? As soon as you hear it, as soon as you hear it, you know, right? Oh, we got the Elmo slide. Uh, the Elmo Macarena is proving difficult to find. But like, as soon as you hear the dun da 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 da, like, oh, okay, that's the Macarena. But me lost me cookie at the disco? Just. All right, so we'll give it two more minutes. <laughs> oh, Moose, I hope I haven't propped some, like, buried horrendous memory. Um, bikers have been known to go there, but it is not a biker bar, Scotty. Now, the thing is, if you can find a bar that has a uh, a webcam or something of the equivalent, this allows me to hit anywhere that has one of these digi jukebox. Oh, just Cookie Monster. Fucking legend. Because what we could do is put Where's My Cookie on every hour on the hour for the rest of the night until I get fucking barred. <laughs> Okay. Well, so friends, me lost me cookie at the disco. Play song with priority. Song added. Your music has been added to the priority queue. <laughs> Wee. <laughs> A 
crime has been done this day. Uh, Lizzie says, second question, do you have Google service in the living room? It's not, uh, I don't know if it's set up. Uh, when we moved into this place. <laughs> well, so Lizzie, I'll update you. I'll update you on the story. <laughs> it okay, just again friends, I need to state these credits have been on my account for years. I didn't know I even had them. Like <laughs> our order is not mad, just as disappointed. I couldn't possibly comment. Should we, get to, uh, should we get chased around for a bit more? I feel that uh, after that crime, I kind of deserve it. <laughs> Just look at that satisfied look of mischief, you legend. I know what I'm about, friend. Okay, so the, the blood flasks are definitely worth it. Magic number. <laughs> Scotty, thank you for the ten bucks. Get Ned, thirty-three. That's a fucking load of. That's. That's like shy of three years. I just need you to know. I just got a fucking text that says in all caps, "Was that you?" <laughs> Oh my word! Kathy's like you're a monster. I am. I am. <laughs> All right, all right. If we do another one, we're not doing it until nine. All right. Oh my word. <laughs> Let the hunt begin. <laughs> Apparently, no one else has been using the jukebox tonight, so it came on full blast. Full blast. Okay. I'd like to say I'm sorry, but ow, ow, ow. What the fuck? Some 
fucking snacks around here. We're almost fucking dead. The bug in this area is that his weird, creepy mates not only tell him where they are, but also hurt me, and apparently they hurt me bad. So, I hate that for us. <laughs> I want to go back to laughing about... <laughs> Where's my cookie? I need my cookie! Oh, and the water is also poison. Take this for us. If your next question, friends, is are you proud of yourself, the answer is extremely yes. Our character is not going to fucking make this through. Oh, damn. Just to rub salt in the wound, the next song at 9 o'clock should be Sorry Not Sorry by Demi Lovato. Okay, so Dustin, thank you for the 200. That's a good shout, but like... Oh no! Wait! Just ate my face! <laughs> Defeated. Super dead. Okay, so we can move faster. Okay, so each strength or fortification sacrifice provides Ambrosia. Draw a new set of strengths and fortifications each night. Let's let's go for the shuffle, because we've not gotten a good run. Oh, it's so good. No one knows how cool we are. No one knows. Unless they also have Sears for Cookie on their machine. Okay, let's see what we've got. Because we can't... Okay, we either have to just camp Where's My Cookie, or, like, we've got we've to come at this sideways. We can't just spam them with Baby Shark or Nursery Rhymes or Manamana. No, we got to... We're a better class of criminal, all right? So, like, how do we go at this sideways? Okay, so, so I'm bringing up the, uh, the app now so we can see what we've got. All right. So, professional pirate. Uh, no professional pirate, I'm afraid. Yeah, Moose, round two is only funny if it's clever. Do they have the Mecha Cookie dance? The fact that Mecha Cookie Monster is a real thing and yet doesn't have a fucking uh, model kit of it is proof that the video games industry loves me, but Sesame Street doesn't. Uh, oh, a mask can be found at each second location. Wear it to gain random warden strength. That's cool. I 
Uh, so I hate this. The fiend ambush increases the number of fiends. by the book by Lazy Town. Okay, think about it like this. It's got to be something that comes in innocuously and then causes chaos. So Arrow Griffin, if you're wondering what in the bloody hell we're doing. Um, so we're playing this. This is Harvest Hunt. A roguelike, so you are being hunted by daylight um, up. Um, it is fascinating and I'm having a fucking great time with it. Uh, we've, we got out of our first paddling pool run and now we've actually got to play this game like we know what we're doing. And it is very, very good. And if you want to know any more about the game, please ask. I'm more than happy to explain. We've been very kindly given an early copy. Um, so this game doesn't come out till next month. So we found a couple of bugs, but honestly, they've just been like UI and um, controller bugs. a real good time of this so the drinking song uh for the socially anxious i don't know it uh scotty says i wonder if this online jukebox thing is in the uk it is i just they they have different names for different services like i haven't used it to the same level of chaos and the thing is i wouldn't actively spend money to do this it's just a coincidence that my drunk ass had 23 credits, now 20. And bearing in mind, so a song is 20, a song with priority is 3. Uh, a song is 2, a song with priority is 3. That's what I was trying to say. Drinking Tonight by Mishka Sibal. Uh, not bad, not bad. But we've got an hour to brainstorm the next one. Uh, what kind of things are hunting you through scenic pumpkin town? Um, that would be a creature called the Devourer. The Devourer is big and mean. No spoilers for guessing what the Devourer does. It devours things! Like my face! I don't like it. Right next to the fucking axe we need. Our advantage of this character is that we can move silently. He's right. God, he can fucking moat when he wants to. Where are you? that fucking miss oh and the the way it works with the lantern is that we can keep the lantern off but the further it's the longer it's off the more insane we go there we go Oh, come on! Hit him in the face with an axe, and he's like, nim, 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 
<sighs> so, uh, Angelus, I hope that answers your question. Friends, if you are intrigued by this game, please do give it a wish list. And I do think this poor character is not going to make it through. So, so far we've been murdered twice. Alright, so we've got Mighty Pitchforks and Imperishable. Failure to banish the Devourer this night will lead to the loss of 80 Ambrosia. We need 200. We currently have fucking none. This is not going well. Um, CS Moose, you are correct that we can play six more songs with low priority, or we can play... No, no, we can play six with high priority. Oh, I misread your thing. Yeah, we can do six more plus one low priority track. Now, again... Where's my cookie is still the current contender because we can roll it through, right? I don't see. Good morning, sunshine, by the narcissist cookbook. Is that a good song? I don't think the narcissist cookbook is on there. Yeah. But like there's got there's, there's there's something there. Like the boys are back in town. That is that is peak vice, right? That is absolutely spot on. But we need to we need to we need to Trojan horse this, right? Something that comes in with a, either an unknown or a, a sense of familiarity. And then, bam! Like, out of nowhere. <sighs> okay, musicals. Musicals are a good place to start. Uh, what about... Avenue Q? No, that's too obvious. <laughs> but it is here! It is here! The internet is for porn. The internet is for porn. <laughs> Schadenfreude is good. Uh, Scott, you found Elmo doing Thunderstruck? Fuck yeah. There is Cookies by Ninja Sex Party. <laughs> God, I wonder if there's a way to, to bookmark. Weird Al Yankovic is always a good one. Kind of, you can kind of sneak him in there. I like how we've gone from doing really well against the the destroyer or the desponder or the deconsumptionizer or whatever it is we're facing here, but I've gotten consistently worse. Um, Uh, sorry. Um, it looks like the uh, wanted dead party is not happening this weekend. So we're gonna be fine. I'm just gonna get out of the house this weekend. We're gonna do a thing, but no! Just have to go fucking insane in this tiny windowless room!
is. Oh well. <laughs> God damn it. Holy boss, what are you talking about, Will? There's windows in front of you. A window to the internet. Oh, sorry. D uh, Scotty, I hadn't even considered you'll be able to hear that. That was me scrubbing out the event on my calendar with great spite. You could feel the... the and... Oh, it's nothing against Chorby. Like, I'm just sad. I was really looking forward to that. Uh, Wanted Dead, if you haven't noticed, has kind of become my... I'm saying my, my white whale of sorts. But yeah, Dustin, there'll always be another time. I just... Finding people who get it, I think, has been very, very challenging with Wanted Dead. And somebody that could, like, host a fun times. Uh, but it will not be the last time, you know? I've, uh... Well, as I'm sure you've noticed, there's been a lot of people who have been describing Wanted Dead as, like, you know... A, a shit game that's full of memes and I'm like no it's not shit though that's the that's the thing it's not bad it is living its own fucking best life what's up puppies hey miss go settle mate Despite his assertions to the uh, the contrary, the baby boy is fine. Okay, so I don't actually know what all of the um, the fiends do. I know the one with the cone is obviously vision. That one could be sound, but our character's whole thing is they don't make noise while moving. Oh, and we do have the Mighty Mighty Pitchfork for this one. But on the flip side, there's no way like, I'm going to make the Ambrosia count. Because the stuff I failed to collect from the previous ones is gone. So we literally, we have to... We have to dispatch this bastard. It's our only option. Because if we can't dispatch him on this run, then we lose more than we have. Slack Circus? I don't think I know it. <laughs> Sorry, Dustin says, uh, what if we started a... Uh, a Mighty Mighty Boss Tones pirate metal cover band called the Mighty Mighty Crossbones. Still a better story than uh, Scum and Bones, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, and Scotty, like, we don't have 80 to lose, you know? Because I have a feeling it's the... If you don't make it out, then you get nothing. So you have to choose between escaping and or. There he is. Big fucking bastard. 
you have to choose between escaping or defeating him, and I assume defeating him gets you the good shit. Like, I don't know what that whole thing was about, like, gaining extra masks from other areas. Probably would have been super useful if I'd managed to nail it. Alright, Gigantor, what the fuck are you? No, I do like the Mighty Mighty Crossbones. That's a really good ship name. Might be a little too long. Listen here, I'm just a big mad. I need you. fragment. Not too shabby. So we can get over to the magic tree before uh, Officer Bastard comes back. I'll definitely take a cheeky heal. Ah, oh, bloody come on. Come on now. Okay, now if I remember rightly, over by the tree we've got the blood grenades, which were powerful. And we've got the, um, like, the slow heals. Should help keep me the fuck alive. There's only 64 of the things left around here. Okay, sorry. Okay, so other songs to be a terror with. God, Disco Cookie, though. God, Disco Cookie was... That was... What a fucking opening gambit. Mmm. Questionable jar. Sorry, the, the nondescript crunching sound is my character standing on logs that sink. I'm not enjoying. Now, I didn't check to see if uh, the never-ending song by Lamb Chop was on there. But I think an American bar is going to know that one off the bat. Okay, so what are the current contenders? The current contenders are, I left my cookie on the dance floor, repeat. Uh, the boys are back in town.
need to fuck off there, mate. Oh, I've got more, uh, I've got more messages from the bar, so bear with me a second. Hang on, we'll pause it. You know what? Badger Badge is always a classic. Uh, someone says, it's someone's birthday here if you wish to be really obnoxious. Ooh. What are you thinking? Uh, this is caffeine. Once we go through the next round, I'll check to see if any of the Weeble stuff things are there. Because, I mean, it's a lot better than your average jukebox, these Digi ones. They do get updated, but, you know. What songs are available is, uh... Is... What songs are available is at the mercy of, uh, the licensing gods. be able to jam it with the uh, the pitchfork. So this whole character's deal is that they're just super fucking quiet. You know, what with the mighty mighty pitchfork and all. Happy birthday, metal version. Uh, the I Have a Theory from the Buffy musical. Alright, so that's a definite contender. His eyes are beating. Sorry. Ah, oh, Anyanka, you deserved so much better. Sorry, the the Buffy takes that no one asked for. I can fucking hear him. Big loud bastard. Oh, we've got to get right fucking on him. This is a really bad idea. I got him! Bastards! Fucking wanker. Alright, Pitchfork might be a poorly thought out idea. And on the plus side, there's some goodies around here, so we should be fine. Just chug some questionable potions and we'll be good to go. Back of the net. Not as good as a wink. If they have Tom Cardi, that's a that's a fucking plan. Skeet up, but up, but hole. Happy birthday to you, as sung by the minions.
can't find me. Absolutely found me. He absolutely found me. Hate that for us. However, the fucking fragment. Nope, nope. Come here. There we go. And there was some um, extra leaves here because I'm not going to risk it for a biscuit. Uh, so, Wolf, yeah, we, uh, to bring up to speed, I found out that I have $20 worth, uh, sorry, $10 worth of credits on a Digi Jukebox thing that I used once, like, two, three years ago. And we <laughs> have been using it to be terrors. Now, we're being tactical. Well, I shouldn't say tactical. We're being tactical about our terrorizing. So far, we put on the uh, Elmo. What was it? The Elmo's dance track of "I Left My Cookie on the Dance Floor." Fuck off now! Get fucking banish me! There we go. Get fucking banished. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but fire will always burn thee. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's weak to fire. <laughs> Akira Zero, thank you kindly. Right, how goes it? Um, it's fucking two years worth of subs, friend. I've known each other far, far longer. So, thank you. Um, and yeah, I told everybody about Project Zomboid on Saturday, so we should have a good squad together. Oh, first clear of this run, Jesus Christ! Okay. Vandal. Uh, interact with fiends to disable them. Oh, I love that. Uh... Let's go with the Gourmand, because that definitely helped us last time. So we've got Rabbit's Foot again, interacting with Bells temporarily to make no noise while moving. Uh, failure to banish the Devourer loses, and then Fiend Alert. But we can disable Fiends now, so that's pretty useful for us. Alright, Blood Flasks, love them. Vigor, all about that life. Hatchet, not my friend. We'll make it work. <sighs> okay, yeah. Well, so Raven, I thought about Tom Lear earlier. But uh, there are a few suggestions, so let's have a look on it. Okay, so... Uh, so we've got Badger Badger. No. Uh, so Weird Al is viable. So that's definitely on the that's definitely on the cards. Uh, I I don't think Tom Cardi is going to be on there, but let's have a look. Sadly, no. <laughs> Holy Bus says, Bo Burnham's welcome to that. Nah. Like, there is a certain amount of psychological damage. Uh, as I said, I was in the bar the other night and somebody decided that they were going to do a full playthrough uh, on priority. Uh, 
uh, of the entirety of Bo Burnham's inside in order back to back, and it did everybody a damage. Dust and give him the old razzle dazzle. And Dustin, are we talking about the LMFAO shots track? Because I don't know if you've noticed, friends, but Party Rock is in fact in the house tonight. Uh, we, like, there hasn't been any ones that have jumped out to me as like pure genius, right? So far, I will admit, the the juvenile uh, delinquent in me wants to do uh, the internet is for porn. Because, yeah. Rickroll hasn't been suggested. See, here's the thing. Uh, to give you all the, uh, the, the rules of the game, the lay of the land, the context. So the bartender has the ability to skip the song, right? Oh, you are fucking kidding me! <laughs> fucking bullshit. So much bullshit. God. Yeah. This is the problem, we might have peaked too early. Cookie Monster Sings Disco is a really hard act to follow. Like, it's just weird enough, right? So, like, a Rick roll, you can hear that coming a mile off. Bartenders can be, like, dead. But Cookie Monster Sings the Hits, like, that's. That one goes places. Okay, well, I thought I was supposed to be able to disable you now. You bastards. Because, like, if we peaked early, we peaked early. That's fine. It's not letting me kill him. Because my dumbass picked the uh, new set of goodies every time uh, perk. Well, I mean, we get a new set of goodies every time. Ah, uh, you know what? Christmas songs could be delightfully unhinged. Also, the thing I'm finding really fascinating about this is how there's no time limit, right? 
but the amount of resources that we can get decreases because whilst we're fucking about, the devourer has eaten all our snacks. And like... There's no, like, formal time limit. I'm always a fan of that mechanically. Standard time limits are so cumbersome. Man, this guy's taking it real personally. It's not like I chipped off a piece of his uh, flesh to be used to destroy him. Oh wait, that's exactly what I'm doing. Like Bob, Barbie Girl by Aqua, strong innings again, strong suggestion. Poisoning pigeons in the park would be a great one. Because old, uh, what's his face? He comes in real subtle. Uh, or the masochistic tango. Shit, they found us. We're fucking rumbled. chug this now but if we can get one of the hand grenades he's just putzing around over there this is another game that is not good for conversation And friends, if there has been anything from today that has uh, has uh, you have enjoyed or has amused you greatly, especially from this game, please clip it because I'd love to send it over to the uh, the dev team. Because I think it's pretty obvious I'm having a fucking good time with this game. Your shot. I broke his face. Like in that movie. Face off. Oh, of course, he's between us and where we need to be. <sighs> Lizzie McGuire theme? Okay. Ah, uh, sadly, I don't think it's going to be on there, Lizzie, but White People Taco Night is an absolute, like, It is definitely a power play.
Now, if it was guaranteed not to be skipped, right? Like, if we didn't have to, like, get our terrible songs in under cover of darkness, what would be a real uh, power play? Fucking uh, the full saga of the Lemonade Duck. Bom, bom, bom. Oh, actually, so one thing I did notice, there is Avenue Q on there, which means there might be other musical soundtracks. There's probably a company that distributes them. Jukebox hero. I see what you're going for. Nice. Meta. Um. Yeah, this is a powerful woman by Pitbull featuring Dolly Parton again. In this house, in this house, we stand, Dolly. A friend, we might have, we might just be too fucking good at this. Like, I think we kicked too much ass with our first innings. However. Here is one point I do want to make. These credits don't expire. We don't have to use them today. Also, coming up with good ideas while being chased by the literal devourer is uh, challenging. Why not the fucking touch from the Transformers movie? Why not the touch? Fuck! I mean, no one's gonna be mad. this big bastard. I think he was behind me. Did find some goodies I haven't found yet, so that's pretty good. There we go. The good news is that we've got that, we chugged that health potion, so we are still recovering. That one's 
chomp that down at all. Uh, Scotty, is there a way to see the track list, or is it just limited to use in-app? I'll have a look when, if we manage to defeat the Devourer again. Just uh, remind me once we're out of uh, we're out of this run. Because it's kind of like with karaoke stuff, like, some companies put their stuff online so you can just find them. Most don't, which is very frustrating. Hunting your stinky da. That's your da over there, the devourer. He's a right villain. Extremely hard to tell close to sometimes. Though the way he affects like environmental stuff is so impressive. This feels personal. Some fucking Looney Tunes shit right here. snack because I don't want to die then get the fuck out of here <sighs> I cannot wait for one of them to pop up and be like I can't wait for him to pop up right as we get there and be like hello <laughs> Turgid swamp water. That's what the flavor is. You do it. You do it, you big bastard. Get to fuck! Yeah. Ring that fucking bell. Two bells! Uh, excuse me. Alright. Claim his fucking mask. And then we'll see what uh, other chaos we can wrought. Yeah, it's obviously no coincidence that the the tribute, sorry, the warden's mask and the devourer's mask look very similar. Okay, and even if we fucking die, we've made enough to make this harvest. Ooh, we used to become immune to poisons. Choose new strength. We have crouch, fast while crouching. Uh, receive vigor when damaging. We'll go. Oh, actually, I'm going to go walk faster. A uh, new fortification. Ooh. Let's go energy rations. Uh, because that way we can put a lot of stuff out. Uh, the more of the rations we're snacking on, the more health we got. And those uh, tunes. Alright, you're right, uh, Lizzie, it is 9 o'clock. We need to choose our next track. Okay. So, let's have a look. Uh, we have. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's the sales point.
Nah, sorry, Lee. There's nothing online. It's only in app. Beans. Ah, I'm sorry, friends. Okay, so we just got to kind of uh, we got to we got to chill it and ill it. We got to wing it. I'm gonna put some some smooth jams on just to offset the uh, the fear that this game has instilled in me. All right. So again, currently, we lost my cookie on the dance floor. Um, we've had some we've had some good suggestions. There was hairspray. Okay, Hairspray soundtrack to the motion picture and Hairspray original Broadway cast recording are available. Just, I'm just saying. Okay, what have we got? Oh, sorry, I... Uh, apologies for going mute there for a second. My brain went, Book of Mormon? Brain, no. No, buddy, no! Sadly, not available. Uh, no Tom Cardi, I'm afraid. No Tom Cardi, no Book of Mormon, but it was a good idea. Sadly, no Professor Elemental either. Okay. And like I said, there is a distinct chance we might have peaked. Let's go for the jugular. Do you want to build a snowman? Oh, shit. From Frozen? That might get me stabbed. Just because that's something that I would do. Ah, no frozen. How is it they have um, <laughs> Bo Burnham's inside, not frozen? Oh, Buffy the Musical, yes. No, uh, they have the soundtrack to the movie of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but no joy. And sadly, they do not have the soundtrack to the Digimon movie, so I can't play Len Steal My... Uh, the Len cover of um, 99 Red Balloons. <laughs> yeah, Moose, I think I should. Just send him a, a little message. Okay. Come on, we are a smart, good-looking bunch of numpties. We can think of this. Sadly. Although apparently a gentleman called OG Bobby Billions made a song, Hannah Montana, uh, featuring Rizzo Rizzo and uh, Lil CJ. <laughs> Baby Got Back is always a, a possibility. It feels a little bit of a basic choice, though, you know what I mean? <gasps> They've 
got Richard Cheese. <laughs> They've got Richard Cheese. Oh no. <laughs> if you haven't encountered Richard Cheese, Richard Cheese does a uh, lounge covers. Richard Cheese does uh, lounge covers of non-lounge songs. Now, there's many, many ones that you could go for. Now, the one that most people are familiar with is Down With The Sickness, which was on the soundtrack for the remake of Dawn Dead, which was very good. Um, and there's a lot here. Baby Got Back, Girls, 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 Chop Suey. Um, however, as much as Freakin' Leash and People Equals Shit are quite good, I think it's got to be Richard Cheese's cover of Nookie. So if I might uh, regale you with a little sample. Check. One, one, two. I came into this world as a reject. Look into these eyes. They don't see the size of these flames. Dwelling on the past, past. Burning up my brain hot. Get me? You feel me? From the pain. Comes in soul. Comes at you out of nowhere. Now she's stuck with my homies that she fucked. Ooh, and I'm just a sucker with a lump in my throat. Like a chump, hey, like a chump, hey, like a chump, hey. I did it all for the nookie. Come on, the nookie, come on. <laughs> this was my alarm clock for like three. Stick it up your yeah, stick it up your yeah, stick it up your yeah. We got it, we have it. Uh, I also, friends, it is unfortunately nine o'clock. Uh, I've got to get the, the dags downstairs just for a quick tinkle. So I understand it's pretty uh, a low numbers evening. So I'm going to roll the grenade and take the dogs out. <laughs> uh, mainly so I'll be able to see from across the road. But yeah, so that was uh, Nookie by Richard Cheese. That's only two credits for priority? <laughs> Song play. <laughs> now we wait. Uh, okay, friendos. Uh, I will leave you with some uh, some funky smooth jams. Uh, and I'll pop back. But yeah, let's... Uh, uh, I'll report any chaos. So yeah, grab yourself a snack. Grab some water or a bevy or whatever you fancy. Uh, at very least, we've got to finish this season because I fucked up the first two runs and now I'm two successful runs deep. So we've got to balance it out. We've got to balance it out. Well, Moose, I think it might be the times of when songs are cheaper, but uh, I'll get you some more details. <sighs> Richard Cheese, Richard Cheese. <laughs> I'm gonna get fucking barred. All right, well, Scotty, get some sleep, friend. Thank you for popping in. It's always lovely to see you. And I hope you know that, like, even though I've been a sad sack today, you've been throwing loads and... I hope you know how fucking grateful I am for that, all right? So thank you. The Richard E. Cheese Zone. Damn it, that's good, Dustin. Really good. Okay, go grab a snack, friends. Uh, or if you're heading to bed, thank you so much for a lovely evening. Uh, and I'll be back with you all in just a moment.
Hello there. Uh, that's River so far. Now I've got to get the uh, the wee baby Amos down, and then we are back. Seriously though, friends, thank you all again for waiting on this. I really appreciate it. It's uh, some days it is a struggle juggling being the everything person, and you lot are very patient with me. I can't say enough thank yous. All right, so fucking wee. All right, next round, next dag. Enjoy the smooth jams. I'll be back with you in just a second.
by the old gods and the new. Oh, thank you for waiting, friends. I really appreciate it. I know today's been a bit of a fucking disaster, but we're here. Oh, I'm relatively sober. Actually, no, I am sober. Which uh, makes definitely for a change. <sighs> uh, I did not receive any response from Richard Cheese, so I don't think we... Uh, I don't think we pulled the same level. Oh, I don't like that. That basically means the Devourer can kind of one-shot us. But... Okay, so those are definitely useful. Same with the blood flasks. The stink pots are not useful. Can we get one monster engine? The hatchets have not helped. So yeah, we'll go for blood flasks. Hello, River. You come say hi? You come say hi? I'm the bestest big girl in the whole wide world. Yes, I know. But yeah, friends, I think we peaked at the Cookie Monster Monster Disco. I'm going to level with yous. Uh, also, we don't have to defeat the bastard to win this time round. So we can just kind of, I don't want to say enjoy ourselves because this shit is spooky as, but... We're not on the same kind of, like, death or glory run. Ah, uh, uh, River. Uh, both Ludo and Raven say hello. Uh, Queen River is, unfortunately, uh, indifferent to your greetings, but... Uh, you know, that is, uh, that is how she rules. Yeah, no. Oh, that's interesting. So if we're fully healed, and we go over to a snack, that's 60. Like, fucking 6-0. That's a fucking moneymaker right there. So Lucy says, what if the same song again? Two hours, new victims in the crowd. All right. Midnight is the cutoff. Because from like midnight onward, the peeps in that bar are predominantly like service industry, bartenders. You know, the reason I like that place is because everybody in there keeps weird, janky hours like we do. Uh, and they're all... Yeah, it's a bartender's bar at that point. Right now, there are... Well, I wouldn't necessarily call them innocent, but there are uh, regular non-service folk. And I would consider them to be uh, fair game. It is interesting that so far we haven't seen why more ambrosia might be good. Um, one thing I do really appreciate from this, though, is uh, almost similar to, like, Sea of Thieves and stuff like that, like, everything you need to know about this game, you can be told by looking at the, the skyline. Yeah, no, so Dustin didn't even get a, a noise from our last, um, our last entry. So as much as it pains me to admit. No! No! Bad boy! Bad boy! Great, even all those snacks now. However, I know there are snacks here. So 
difference here. I think we, again, I think we peaked with the Cookie Monster boogie. However, that does mean that we now have, we now have a perfect setup, right? At no point do we need to consider what should we pick, because we've already found perfection. The Song of the Never Ends is a powerful choice, but I haven't found uh, a, a version that we can use, you know? Sorry, give my uh, itchy nose. This game makes me so fucking tense. Just a nice calming game for a Tuesday night. Okay, caffeine, go get some good sleep, friend. And uh, yeah, I I'm hoping at some point I'll uh, have the the time to hear all the stories because I want to hear the tales. This is spirit trees. Big trees this way, yeah. But yeah. Assuming that I don't fuck up, we've already collected uh, enough goodies to see if there it is. You buddy, back in your fucking hole. But we don't need to defeat him. Oh, that's just fucking person right there. Oh, fuck you.
Though, interestingly, the um, the healing stuff doesn't stack. Uh, it just increases the amount of time you have, like, healing for. Right, let's, let's just get the fuck out of here. Like, we made our quota. We're safe. We don't gotta worry. We good. We good. So, two fuck-ups, two wins, and one... Loiterer, so they recover vigor while crouched. I spent all my time crouched. Cut writings by Martin. March 8th year. What's the point? The sudden expedition was a mistake of colossal proportions. No one's going to find this report. I did everything asked of me and more. Kept my head down, made myself useful, killed anyone who knew more than they should, didn't. Now I'm stranded in Luna Nova with a contingent of overly sensitive, fragile good for nothings. I was the one who figured out that we should tear out the monster's sodding flesh while they complain like squawking hens when it's their turn. I hear them all talk behind my back. They think I know nothing outside of fighting. But they're the ones who don't see reality. Every monster night, they growl and whimper like sick dogs and then pretend everything's fine in the morning. Luna Nova is as much a war zone as any battlefield I've been to. Okay. New harvest season. Okay. Twisted empathy. Damaging the devourer also damages you for the next five seconds. Hate that. Uh, Enid was chosen. Is it me or is the mask getting more and more fucked up with each person? Right? Like. Okay. So this way, uh, I get to keep the same strengths that we have as we continue. Uh, that way, I can actually start building towards something rather than it just being like, Ah, oh, roll the dice! Oh no, it didn't work! Sorry, bear with me just a second, friends. Kijoki, sorry for the tippity taffity. Okay. So it feels like we need to somehow survive all of the different characters and then. I, I'm trying to work out how this is going to unfurl. You feel me? Like. Narratively, there's a lot going on. Uh, Pilgrim badge. Devourer's attacks deal half damage. Love that. But we're poisoned, and we're also taking damage over, over time. If we have to banish the bastard. I guess it keeps going so long as we make our ambrosia count, which bitch. Hmm. So, what are your thoughts and feels, friends? Sorry, I know it's very late for me to be asking you questions about a game that I've been playing, but. Oh, excuse me.
it just struck me that we are like four and a half hours in. I never posted about this stream. I never told anybody we were playing a, a game that no one else has had hands on. Well, actually, I think some other people might have played a little of this, but like this game doesn't come out till next month. I really want to binge this as well. There's definitely this like bite-sized element to it that's really resonating with me. I'm also curious if this is the only map that we're going to be encountering. Because it does have that, like, incredible detail about it, but, like, what if there's more? Hmm. Like, honestly, friends, this is one of those titles I wouldn't be surprised that we find out in, like, ten hours that there's, like, an underground or some wild nonsense or things like that. Uh, just our little notes of like, ever since first blood was spilled, did something trigger the consumption of ambrosia? And there may yet be more creatures. Because hmm. like, there's definitely that like plague murder pit in the center of the map. It's got my brain whirring a little bit. I guess because everything else I've been playing at the moment in my downtime, friends, is like Bellatro or Helldivers. One doesn't have to think too heavily about Helldivers. <laughs> it is a game that can be summed up with Big Badaboom. Oh, also, Backpack Battles. Because apparently this is just a year of games that consume all of our time. Manage democracy, holy bus driver. Manage democracy. No, no. Helldivers is brilliant because it boiled down to its core elements, it's just about fun. But it uses... It, it uses its... Uh, its world so well to both accent the fun, but also to actually say something as a game. Like, feckin' props to them. They threaded that needle. But yeah, the other things I'm playing, as I said, is Bellatro and Backpack Battles, which, again, I hope they end up doing private matches, but I think by that point... I think by that point, I might have binged it a little too hard. You know, I may be the tool of my own destruction on that one, you know? I'll tell you that, friends, I'm definitely flagging today. Oh, okay.
All right, so this one, Poison Fragments, Pilgrim Bridge. Like, honestly, I'm thinking for this, we just want to go... Like, we don't want to bother with defeating the bastard if we don't have to. Oh shit, and the um, uh, the bonuses we had earlier like actually uh, increased our vigor permanently. Okay, so yeah, so now we're just going to sneak around, hoard up as much as we can and go from there. And now that I know that healing at full health gets us a crap load more uh, goodies. Like, avoiding conflict is probably our strongest play. It's like, get healthy, stay healthy, eat ambrosia. Still raising our health? I thought that was a feature from the last match. So pilgrims, poisonous. Yeah, using rations increases your maximum HP by five. Fuck. That's kind of a bit good. Ah, uh, this character cannot uh, just snack down on anything unless we've taken damage. Okay. Sorry, I'm learning this game at the same time. <laughs> yeah, you, Angel Queen, that is a feature that should be available as part of the human condition. Oh, fuck. Right on. Like right now, like any time that we can snack at the same time. Okay. Yeah, any time that we can hit the snacks at the same time as avoiding him. Basically, getting a little bit hurt repeatedly and healing up would allow us to beefcake our health. And yet, we're getting extra rations from this. Is already like just eating all the fucking berries he can. But again, friends, this is this is an early build. This game's not coming out until next month, so there may be ways for us to kind of exploit the system more than the peeps. Oh, he was... I thought about him, all right. All right, the kid. <laughs> River's trying to turn the light off to get my attention. I 
uh, River believes River is not getting enough attention right now and is sulking behind me. Amos is high as a kite in the other room. Living his little best life. Alright, so we keep heading round this loop. Yeah, so we're on the way towards Big Tree. Big Tree different from Sacrifice Tree. This increased health bonus might be incredibly powerful. Oh, okay. So we're now now we're at 150. That, that's the max we can be at. Fighty, no fighty. You're not my real dad. Honestly, friends, I'm seriously considering just like take the run. Let's get out of here. Perhaps we have to banish him to get more of the Ambrosia back. Because, like, in previous runs, it's basically been the case of... Sometimes the Ambrosia needs to respawn, sometimes not. Like, sometimes it feels like we're drawing from an empty well game. Me, Moon. <laughs> maybe, Fred. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's the play. Fred say Moon needs to ally with the insidious villain in order to aid their nefarious goal. Daylight slip. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Get fucked. Yeah. 
Not too shabby. Just shy of halfway of what we need. Oh, a hideout. New structures can be entered, which cause Devour to lose track of you. Fully regenerate vigor once. Oh, I love that. Uh, increases throw range. Rations recover twice as much vigor. Uh, here we go. Uh, interact with fiends to disable them. Uh, each strength or fortification sacrificed provides 20 ambrosia. Chosen entry. When acquiring tools, choose the starting location. Oh, that's pretty cool. Stash tools. Five random tools can be found for free in the farmland's entry point. Water is poison. Stabby, stabby, stab, stab. Okay. Oh, sorry friends, I keep going deep into Thor and like the the constant circling drain of my mind pulls me in. Oh. <laughs> Lizzie says, do we need to plot another song to send? I'm seriously thinking of just uh, just again hitting them with the uh, the Cookie Monster disco song. Not so much sleepy, like, uh, but Angel Kling, like, thank you for asking. I actually, admittedly, it was the sleep of the drunk, but I finally got a decent night's sleep, uh, and then ended up just being a vegetable for most of the day. But finally got some sleep, which I'm very grateful for. Just. No, we don't need to talk about Will stuff. We don't need to talk about Will stuff. I know it's like... <sighs> I have... Uh, I have takeaway tavern pizza to look forward to later on. As uh, Fiona's been running a board game evening. Which, at least from what I understand, has gone very well. Which is very cool. Uh, and I'm going to sneak out for a different board game evening uh, on Thursday. <laughs> Lizzie, you're right! So, Fred, I got an email yesterday that let me know that I had, uh, like, $12 worth of jukebox credits. One of those, like, digital jukebox apps. The kind where you can, like, play a song in a bar, but you pay for it on your phone. And it turns out that years prior, at a birthday party, uh, I had bought, like, 20 bucks worth of credits and only used, like, a few of them. So I got an email from this, these people, got back into my account, and then sure as heck. Uh, well, we started with 23 credits this evening. Uh, we earlier spent three credits to priority play uh, the I left my cookie on the dance floor disco song. Sorry, I left my cookie at the disco. Uh, cookie Monster's seminal disco track from uh, the... Uh, was it like the Elmo Jazz album or some nonsense like that? And uh, we have been using it to commit mischief. The last track we did, which I thought would have more of a reaction, was the Richard Cheese. What ho? It is 10 o'clock. What are you doing still streaming? Oh, ah, yeah. It has been a very bad day, and I did not start until 5 o'clock. So that's why. <laughs> Okay, so we still need three fragments, but we get to choose where we start. I love this for us. So yeah, that Phyllis, thank you for the 200 bits, and I hope you're doing splendid. But yeah, so 
the first song we uh, sent out towards them, uh, the Cookie Monster Disco. You know what? Let me just let me just give you a quick little uh, little sample of what we've been up to. Um, as I said, the follow up was Richard Cheese, uh, the Richard Cheese cover of Nookie, which didn't land as well as, but it was not as good as this. just have to imagine this blaring out the fucking dive bar in Seattle. <laughs> oh, well, Phyllis, I hope you had a good night at uh, Seattle Indies. Hit it, Cookie Monster. <laughs> the night was fine, and me was having a real great time. <laughs> then me got careless, me don't know how, but me had something me can't find now. Me lost me cookie at the disco. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, the temptation to just play that ad infinitum is very high. So yeah, so that's that's the exciting thing we've been up to this evening. Um, hey, look, Fearless, I think now is a good time to write out a steady paycheck. And if you happen to prototype something, that obviously you wouldn't start doing that until after you left. Of course, of course. Yeah. Now, this doesn't. What I'm about to say next is absolutely does not apply to Fearless or any of you who are currently working contracts with uh, uh, with moonlighting uh, clauses or non competes. But what I have seen individuals do in the past is develop their indie titles whilst they're at a studio and not fucking tell anybody about it. And then when they're getting further along, they leave and then announce that they have begun work, even though they've been working on it for ages. So you can kind of like shave off the first uh, year or so of development by not telling anybody. <laughs> You're right, big girl. River is very annoyed that she is not currently the centre of attention. I know, I know. What a villain I am. We in Vodenflow. I would never ever condone that, <laughs> especially on this Twitch dot television. I mean, shit. Like, I'm still curious as to what's going to happen with Dark and Darker. I don't know if you saw, but they're actually going to be going ahead with the mobile version of Dark and Darker. Okay, Holy Bus Crusader, go get some sleep. To be continued, friend. Uh, tomorrow's Elden Ring. <laughs> Fred, no lies detected. Cookie Monster song good. Cookie Monster can do no wrong. And uh, Cookie Monster's also a mech pilot, meaning that they are uh, officially one of the squad. It's very interesting that in terms of these like abilities and cards and things like that, it does feel very reminiscent of Dead by Daylight and like planning your builds in odd and strange ways. You know, I find myself, at least I feel like I'm genuinely planning through so much of this. It, 
sorry, I don't know if, for those of you that haven't played Dead by Daylight, it has the weirdest progression system. These strange, like, they're not quite tech trees. I think they're called like blunt trees or something, where you pick perks along a route and then unlock them section by section. Um, but they have this almost disposable weirdness and definitely a language all their own when it comes to like what perks you want and how you use them, etc. Blood web, thank you, friend. Um, and even though it's not laid out in a similar way, that this is trying to be evocative of like, you know, deck building games and things like that, it does feel like it. Does that make a weird sense? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, and just jumping back, jumping back. Sorry, Fred. Um... I got a text from my friend uh, down at my local being, was that you? I uh, I didn't throw up from laughing earlier, but I got real close. Got real close. <laughs> oh. God. Sorry, friends. I am really enjoying this game. I just... It's definitely not... It's definitely not conducive with uh, my mood today. You know what I mean? Like, because we haven't hit upon a fail state yet, I find it hard to judge how well or how poorly we're doing. Does that make a weird sense? Oh, and um, if you're only joining us this evening as well, friends, uh, just as an FYI, Life Eater, Zalavir's newest title, uh, is out now. Uh, Lizzie, we haven't launched a third wave. Nothing's... Nothing sprung through like a spark of genius. Where's my cookie? Is we peaked, we peaked super early. More chaos for new victims. So, Lizzie, I think if we're going to do this, I think this is something we sh we should pick a time every day and play Where's My Cookie. No, you know what? No, let's let's not run a campaign of psychological warfare against one of my favourite bars. Let's not do that. <laughs> let's let's do not that. <laughs> You know what, friends? I think I'm just going to have to admit defeat tonight. Like, hey, I still managed uh, five hours of streaming today. And I'm not going to end the stream right this second. Like, let's let's chat. Let's hang for a bit more, if that's okay with your good selves. But I don't think I have it in the tank to do uh, another few runs. You know what I mean? That's, that's fine. I've been struggling today anyway, so like... Oh, that's a good point, Moose. Like, what if it goes the other way and it becomes part of it? Yeah! And I, I know I said this at the beginning of the stream, it's the grand irony that if any of you were having a bad brain day, I'd be like, hey, don't worry about it, it's cool, it's fine, don't worry. But if it's myself, I'm like, I can't believe this has happened. Time to beat brain with stick. <laughs> I mean, there are a squad of animals that are reliant on my existence to survive, and uh, definitely, I definitely feel that some days. Oh, why didn't I buy more snacks? Why am I full? Hang on, bear with me, bear with me just a second. I'm not even going to mute the mic. I'm just going to get a piece of cheese out of the fridge. Yeah, that's right. Brain can't be sad if it's full of cheese. <laughs> that's the power of curse.
the bullying I get every time I go to the fridge. <laughs> oh, lordy lordy. <laughs> Vern Flo, I wish I'd said it like that. <laughs> there you go, Fred. It's not that I'm killing my brain with alcoholism. It's that I'm creating a leaner, faster machine. I'm cutting dead weight. Cutting that fat. <laughs> that is exactly what I am doing. <laughs> now, what did you find, Baron? What is your new addiction, friend? Oh, Dave the Diver. I haven't started Dave the Diver properly yet because I'm afraid of it. Same with Cobalt Core. Like, and I understand Dave the Diver has sharks in it. It has things for me to fear. But everything about it, the sushi, the way you acquire materials, all of it, Day the Diver sings to me on a personal level. And like, between everything else, like, back in the earth. <laughs> well, Fred, the, the amount of uh, Muppet covers that were available on that jukebox app was a lot. But maybe I'll have to go through those. Oh. Yeah, no, I've been doing the sleep deprivation dance now for so many days. I've, as much as today was a Brad, a Brad, 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 only exist to make me chall. Oh, I'm sorry, friend. I've been trying to start early. It's just not been happening. <laughs> I don't know what it is about this. Well, I guess Day the Diver was technically last year, but like sleep pattern ruining ending games just coming out one after the other. Like both Alatro and Backpack Battles consume time, but there's no tomorrow. Uh, I was chipping away at Blood West, and I might continue. I made it to the third section, and it is certainly a challenge. But like, like I said, Day the Diver, Cobalt Core, those games scare me. Uh, I have played Black. Uh, I have played Backpack Battles. I can't remember if I have it or not. But um, sorry, Backpack Hero. Backpack Battles is same concept if it was an auto battler. So you lay out your backpack, you have everything kind of slot together, and then like certain items when placed together will combine after a run. It's hitting that same itch that, I, um, that Storybook Brawl was hitting for me, except you can't play private games yet. And the more I look at it, the more I'm like, ah, I don't know if that's going to be a feature, but we'll see. Like it doesn't have the same drafting philosophy as like um, Storybook Brawl and things like that. So. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, we aren't aware of the owner doing anything bad yet. There's also that. God. I mean, selling the studio to a crypto trading site. That bleed Nora. Oh, nice. I mean, that makes sense. Uh, Baron was just saying it plays real well with a touchscreen, a uh, backpack hero. But like, we're also looking at uh, whenever this round of Vampire Survivors content drops next. 
Oh, May 9th. So we've got a few weeks until uh, 22 weapons, 11 new characters, and probably a shit ton of new achievements. Oh, if you haven't seen it, uh, basically, the next Vampire Survivors DLC is a crossover with Contra. So it's going to be, you know, shooty gun bang, uh, muscle bastard stylings. I think I have Double Dragon, Gaiden? Hang on, let me have a look. I, I don't. But the one I definitely want to do, Fred, like, real life willing, is uh, the Dungeons and Dragons side scroller, because that's so good. And a real masterclass in what you can do in the space. Because I was thinking back to things like uh, Mother Russia Bleeds and some of like the the neon nouveau side scrollers that we've uh, had over the last like five or six years. And like River City Girls has definitely been very, very good. And there's been a few others, but the amount the amount of stuff that that OG D and D side scrolling beat 'em up did that others just haven't stepped to is ridiculous. I'm pretty sure it has online co-op, and if it doesn't, Fred, we'll uh, we'll just do battle with um, the Steam Couch co-op. Like, I mean, that's what that feature is there for, right? Um, while we're having a natter, though, friends, I do want to say again. I've not done it justice today, but I do think Harvest Hunt's going to be something special. So, if you do get the chance, please throw out a wish list again. Um, and I'm going to be curious to see what they change. Like, as it, like, if there's anything that will be changing as it gets close to launch. I guess the only thing I can't tell with Harvest Hunt is, did we do good? Were we doing well? Or um, was I getting lucky? Like, every time I look at Harvest Hunt, it's like my brain goes completely blank. <laughs> can't make this shit out. Okay, friends. So I tell you what, I'm going to bring our adventures to a close. Um, I we shall see who is kicking around. But hey, considering that I was, I was doing very, very badly earlier on today, that is a five hour stream. We're going to play a really cool game. And I hope, I hope beyond my, uh, presentational failings today, you really will consider checking that game out. Or at least telling people about it. We are spoiled for places to go after this, so that's good. Um, yeah, friends, even though this was a, a low-powered afternoon of a day, um, just thank you. I The big words are failing me, but I hope you know I'm acutely aware of how fucking lucky I am. I know I've been saying that a lot, but it really does need saying that much, you know? I don't know, if I if I have a bit more of the the wherewithal tomorrow, I'll I'll bring you up to speed on Tales of Will and whatnot. And we'll go from there. But hey, tomorrow's Elden Ring. And no one has a bad time when you have a sword that big and you can make it everybody else's problem. <laughs> Precedentation! That's a big word. Trace in that one. Yeah. Uh Verdon, that's another one where 
I have to say it before my brain tries to spell it out. <laughs> Aww. But Judica, like, the the honor is mine, all right? Like, thank you a lot for supporting me on a day where I'm definitely not... <sighs> Fucking hell. This is an infinite circle of, no, 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 thank you. No, 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 thank you. <laughs> God. So I tell you what, friends, I'm going to pass you over to Chorby after this. Uh, Chorby's playing Hub's Burrow, and I think they're still in the first day or so. So if you haven't seen it, it won't be too spoilerific. And if you have seen it, then you can enjoy uh, how little Chorby knows. Uh, Lizzie, and thank you. I really do appreciate it. You know. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you see me in Discord later, I'm just going to be inking this or building Tiny Gundam. I don't think I've got it in me to fight for managed democracy tonight. I know, I know. That's not very super Earth of me, but it is what it is. Anyway, what is important though is that I say thank you to your lovely selves. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I shall super earth for you. Good. Super earth for the two of us. <laughs> oh, Akira Zero, thank you. So, to give Ned and Akira Zero, thank you for monstrous lock subs, Breeze. Feckin' cool of you. Like, with none of them smaller than two years. To Scotty, Baron Von Sheepington III, PVS, Pun Spectre, Bacon Avenger, Dust in Your Eyes, Fearless Sun, Vander Beast, and, again, Akira Zero, like, fucking thank you keeps me alive and it keeps this going so thank you to the whole moderation team not just lizzie but also caffeine and moose like like i said earlier couldn't do the shit without you thank you and last but by no means least your current reigning yarl eraman who decided to be heckin lovely even when i wasn't even online uh which ended up scaring the pee, -pee out of me from the other room <laughs> well because i hadn't unplugged the speakers before starting stream so I just heard this strange voice yelling at me from in here, and I was like, what the fuck is that? Okay, but you lovely terrors, I'm gonna pass you over to Chorby now. Uh, I think, yeah, I think Chorby's on day one or day two of Hobbs Burrow. So yeah, uh, if you know it, don't spoil it, obviously. And if uh, you've never seen Hobbs Burrow, you're in for a treat. Uh, it's a, uh, retro looking point and click game that is wonderfully written and uh was handled by our i think the vo stuff was handled by our good friends over at wajadai so that's why the vo performances are so good so yeah uh, i hope you will stay and hang with chorby and then we'll if I can go from there okay um so yeah just once more, friends, fucking thank you. I hope you have a lovely rest of your evening. Uh, get the sleeps. Some of us have to. <laughs> and I'll see you tomorrow for Gigantic Swords and possibly, possibly, um, pulling the testicles off a dragon. Who knows? I don't know when the next dragon's coming, but I know what's coming off them. It's the bolts. <laughs> All right, friends. To be continued.